All right, I'd like to call this uh, special meeting of the North Sonoma Valley Municipal Advisory Council to order and uh, on January 5th, 2022. And uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, let's see if Hannah's got the flag. If not, we'll just, um, here it comes. All right, join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America. Of America. And to the and republic, to the republic for, for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. all. All right, thanks. Okay, um, let's see. So uh, just to let people know, we've turned off uh, question and answer and chat for the meeting. Um, when the public comment is open, um, the public, you can raise your hand if you'd like to make a, a comment on Zoom and you'll be recognized and promoted to speak. Um, if it appears that the meeting has been hacked at any point, we'll immediately terminate it and reschedule it for a future date. Um, and now I will open it for a public comment. And this is only for items that aren't on the agenda. So the agenda, this is a special meeting. Um, so it's, it's uh, you know, we have a very limited agenda. The agenda is basically to review and hopefully approve the letter that has been put together on the SDC that will be sent to the supervisors. So any public comment that's not concerning the letter uh, or the SDC uh, is welcome at this point. Yeah, Kate? Uh, do, Chair Dawson, do we need to establish a quorum with a quick roll call? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, uh, um, <clears throat> Council Member Handry, would you mind taking the roll? Yes, I usually have my list. I forgot about that. Um, Ch Chair Dawson? Here. Council Member Nardo Morgan? Here. Council Member Eagles? Here. Council Member Doss? Here. Council Member Newhauser? Council Member Dickey? Here. Council Member Oldroyd? Here. Did I miss anybody? Uh, and you're here, so yes. that's it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so now we'll move on to a public comment. Like I said, this should be, this is items not on the agenda. So this is anything not related to SDC. And giving folks a few moments, but not seeing any hands at this time. And still no hands. All right, thank you, Hannah. And uh, we certainly welcome comments uh, later on during the, the public comment section uh, on, on the letter. Um, well, a couple of things just before we get started, I just want to express my appreciation to the ad hoc committee, um, Kate, Matt, and Angela for um, doing an incredible job on the letter. Um, it's, it's, I mean, that was a, that was a challenge on many levels, and not least of which it was the holiday time. So, um, you know, uh, thank you so much. And it's, you know, it's really, um, it's articulate. It's brief. But probably about as brief as it can be, but it's very articulate, well thought out. Um, you know, one of the challenges is organizing all the things we wanted to say. And I think you guys did a really good job of that, of uh, making that work. And I, and I also think the appendix was, a, um, was a, a small stroke of genius to put all that extra detail into a, a slightly separate document so that it's not overwhelming, but it's still there. Um, so thank you to, to the to you folks. And I also want to thank um, Shannon Lee, who um, ran the poll that, that was used uh, to back up a lot of the statements that were made about uh, what the public, uh, you know, want, wants to see at SDC. Um, so just to let you know, just to just briefly go over how this is going to work. Um, we're first going to take um, comments from council members. And I'd like to encourage council members, uh, there's really two questions that I think are the most important here. And that is, um, is there anything missing from the letter? Any element that really should be there that's not there? And then the other thing is, well, is there anything that's in there that you don't think should be in the letter? Um, you know, remember we're trying to express the community's opinion. Um, so, you know, we're, we're uh, it's, it, it is somewhat broad because of that, although we it certainly gets down into the weeds, especially in the appendix. Um, so, th so think of those two questions as, as kind of the main thing to comment on right now. Um, you know, I'd like to request people keep it to three minutes. Um, and then uh, once the council is done uh, 
commenting on the letter then, and we're not, so we're not gonna edit at this point. We're just gonna comment on what we think might be missing or what, um, what could be taken out. And then we're gonna uh, let the public comment. So public will, will give us ideas for edits and then we'll close public comment. And then we're gonna live, assuming we need to, we're gonna live edit as a council, the letter and Hannah will do that on screen. And then once we have hammered out um, what appears to be a final version, then we will vote. And if we, um, presumably if we vote to approve the letter, then the letter is finalized and then can be sent along to the supervisors. And I assume just becomes part of the regular public record. Um, so any, any questions on that process or uh, before we get started? Okay, um, well, I'm, I will just start. Um, and I would just say that, um, you know, of course, there's a lot of detail that, that could have been covered, but it was just uh, amazingly well done um, summary of where people's thinking has been and, and is. And um, I don't see anything that's missing and there's nothing in there that I would take out. So I would vote for the letter even in this form as a draft letter, I would, I would approve it at this point. And that's, that's all I'll say at this point. So yeah, uh, council member Oldroyd. I just have a, when you refer to the letter, are you referring to the letter and the amendments? Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's assume it's talking about both. Yeah, the, uh, the appendix. appendix? And the... Yep. Yeah, sorry. That's okay, appendix. yeah. So any, you know, uh, you know, if you think it's, you think it has everything, let us know that too. Um, yeah, Council Member Handren. I will echo your um, sentiments. I, I am very grateful to the ad hoc committee for, for doing such a great job. I do think you covered everything and um, there's nothing that I think should be taken out. So thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Narda Morgan. Uh, well, having been part of writing the letter, I know that it was challenging. I, I want to say thank you so much to Kate because she was a real driving force behind this letter. Um, I think there were a lot of things we debated that we should put in. Um, and I think that we covered what we could put in and, and the, the real key points that needed to be there. So, of course, my vote is yes. I don't think we need to add anything or take anything out. All right. Thank you. And uh, well, how about the other, uh, how about Council Member Dickey? I agree. Um, I'm satisfied with the end result for sure. And I need to commend Kate. Uh, it was a group effort for sure. But in most groups, there's always somebody that uh, lends more energy, more organizational skill, more leadership than another. So. Thanks, Kate, very much for everything you contributed to this effort. All right, thanks, Matt. And Kate, care to care to comment? Sure. Yeah, I I I think. Sorry, Arthur, you're going to take line specific fixes later after public comment. Correct? Is right. That correct. Yeah. yeah. So I will comment. Yeah, it was a good process, and I thank my team. We really uh, hashed out how we might do this and and tried to figure out you know, uh, you know, a, a path forward. And I really thank the team for hanging in there with me on this one, <laughs> but I have nothing really, I'm so close to it. I will wait to hear others comments. So thank you. All right, thanks. And thanks again for all your work. Um, Council Member Aldred. Good job. I was just amazed at how you um, took all the information from this vast database of comments and um, brought it down into nine pages. Um, one nitpicky thing is I really valued where you said community benefits in each section, and I'm wondering if that can be brought to a, a more prominent place in the appendix. All right. Thank you, Susan. And uh, Council Member Das. One second, I had to take myself off mute, I apologize. I'm moving to the letter now, I did an excellent letter. The two areas that I focused on were the affordable housing and the fire safety climate resiliency. And I thought they were both excellent. I don't know if we can get 
closer into the percentage of what we would recommend uh, versus uh, what was recommended in the alternatives. But I found both of those excellent. And the rest of them, uh, the other sections were very well written. So I'm very comfortable with the letter as it is. All right, thank you, Damon. And um, I'll just uh, ask uh, Supervisor Gorin if she'd like to make any comment at this point. I have difficulty unmuting because it's all the way at the top of the screen for with about 12 people below it. So I have to pull it down. Um, I, I just wanna say, great job. Uh, I haven't gone through the letter in detail. I'm anxious to do it, read it again, especially the appendix. Uh, just a few things going on in my world, but, um, but great, great team effort. It is amazing. And I hope you can uh, be the role model for the CAC. I know that Mac, Matt really um, worked at creating um, an ad hoc for the CAC. And I'm only going to be with you for a short time because the Springs Mac is tonight as well. So I'm anxious to hear if they have any comments, but they have not um, drafted a letter with specific comments. So uh, we'll see what they do with it, with the discussion, but great job, everybody. Thank you, Susan. And I, I will mention, I think that's all the council members um, as well as our supervisor. Um, I, I will mention that- um, um, Arthur, can I say yeah. one more thing? I did have a conversation with Tennis Wick today and I think all of you have been checking the website almost daily to get the materials for the January 25th meeting. And uh, they are still um, working on uh, some significant revisions on a preferred alternative. I'm not sure when it, I think, you, I hope we will be pleased. I don't know, I don't have much insider information, but um, um, I, you will know when I know as to whether, when that is put, when that information is put up on the website. All right, thank you, Susan. And through the chair, um, Councilmember Newhouser has, been, has his hand up. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, Councilmember Newhouser. Sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to skip you there, Mark. So. Well, that's okay. I ducked out of the room here because my printer is kaput. Ah. So I'm trying to <laughs> yeah, print out a copy of my edits. Um, so uh, yes, I um, want to concur with um, Councilmember Oldroyd and about the consistency of the sections in the appendix. Um, I think that having um, the different sections uh, be comparable, you know, with community benefits, potential funding sources. Um, and I have um, introduced a, a document that I sent to Hannah uh, with uh, edits. I'm also suggesting adding a section on uh, recommended actions and um, constraints um, that we could uh, include in the uh, appendix. And we can review that when we get to that point. All right, thank you, Mark. And um, I, I just wanna mention before we take public comment, um, I did, um, uh, council members, uh, Andrew and Kate and I met with uh, Maite Turi, um, uh, I guess it was uh, early this week. Uh, it's, it's amazing how quickly this year's already zipping by. Um, anyway, we she shared with us um, her draft of they're just basically going to have a statement about STC and it's it's very short. At least what she showed us, it's it's basically maybe eight or ten bullet points. But we compared uh, what she had with what you know, we shared our draft letter, and uh, we we all agreed that that there's really pretty good alignment between what we're putting out and what the Springs is likely to put out from their draft. So that was, that was really good to know that, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not way outside anybody else here. We're, we're right in line with what the Springs Mac is talking about. And also um, Richard Dale of the Ecology Center um, took a look at the letter and I, I can't say for sure that he's speaking for the Ecology Center, but at least for himself, he said he, he would support the letter, uh, the draft letter as we had it. So. So I feel like there's a lot of, um, you know, we wanna have a lot of community buy-in. I mean, this ideally this is kind of the umbrella under which the community can, can um, continue forward here and create something that's you know, more to our liking. So anyway, just that little bit of news. Um, so 
I think we'll move on now to public comment. All right, so some hands are starting to go up. So let me go ahead and share my screen with the um, timer. And we're, we'll give people uh, two minutes to comment. Great. All right, are you seeing that? Yeah. Perfect. All right, first up we have Patricia. Patricia, Welcome. you should now be able to unmute. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think the, the letter looks really great. The only thing I would add is that uh, considering the history of the site, that we there really should be an emphasis on um, disability inclusion in terms of housing, uh, accessibility of the facilities that would, would be there. And you know, just to um, reimagine how people with disabilities could be integrated into this community, including in you know, a possible group homes for people with developmental disabilities. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> they're gonna be job creation, you know, including uh, people in that. Um, and then the other point I wanted to make was uh, that, uh, I don't know if it's in the letter and I missed it, but like, I don't think, you know, the, the plan they have now where you just have a developer and then they just do one, you know, big project. Like I, you know, I think in terms of, you know, we've been more farsighted to look at doing things, you know, um, on a kind of slower basis and not feeling like it, the whole project has to be done at one time. So that might be part of keeping this in a trust or under the state so that it's not profit motivated. I mean, I think in the, the long term, it, it could be profitable or sustainable but instead of making a short-term profit, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I, th I think I'm gonna butt back in for a minute here only because um, I looked over the letters that we've received. And so all the MAC members have access to those, but I just wanted to, to kind of distill those down. Um, so, um, and then if these folks are in the audience, you're welcome to uh, you know either correct me uh, or add to what, what I'm attributing to you. But, um, so here's, here's uh, just very distilled down uh, versions. This one is from Josette uh, brose Iker, um, And she would like to see a dedicated shuttle or transport service and decentralized water systems. So it could include you know, recycling and gray water and things like that. Uh, Nancy Kerwin of Sonoma uh, just praised it as said she generally, it generally hits it out of the park. My deepest gratitude for your hard and fruitful work. Um, Jody Falconer um, says, uh, offered the Opal Community Land Trust as a model uh, and gave us a website and that's up in Washington. And that, that actually looked very exciting. It's, they talk about uh, permanently affordable housing. So, you know, deeded, deed restricted housing. Um, and then uh, next one's from David uh, Brigode from Sonoma. He had a number of comments. He'd like to ask uh, the supervisors or the state to extend the deadline for a year. Uh, he'd like to see advisory committees be reconstituted. I'm not sure exactly what that would mean, but uh, to include, quote, non-NIMBY community and affordable housing input. Um, and I would agree we could use more affordable housing input. Um, he'd like to have full, open, and transparent hearing and decision-making. Um, he'd like to have the state pay for the cleanup. Um, and the last one is affordable housing, quote, by right, with densities and approvals pre-guaranteed and public input limited to design review. Uh, I won't claim to fully understand his comments, but that's, uh, that's what he gave us in the letter and those, that should be available at the county. Um, let's see. And then Terry Shore uh, from Sonoma, she urges a yes vote. Uh, she thinks the entire property should be retained as a public or a nonprofit entity like Marin Headlands is a, is a good model she proposed. Uh, don't urbanize the site. Uh, that reverses decades of city-centered growth and increases development pressure on the surrounding rural areas. And she suggests trying to revisit the legislation on the, on the site. So those are the, those are the com public comments we got uh, via email. So now I'll turn it back over to the audience now, but uh, I just wanted to make sure those were out there at this point. Um, All right, thank you, Chair Dawson. Next up we have, uh, this is for Terry. Terry, you should now be able to unmute. 
Ah, speaking of Terry. Hi, Terry. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi, um, Chair Dawson. Hello, everyone. Uh, Terry Shore, 515 Hopkins Street, Sonoma. Yes, you did a good job of summarizing um, my point. So um, I would just like to say that I support the letter. I think it was very well done. It's one of the best comment letters I've ever seen, and I'm kind of a comment letter queen myself. <laughs> so it, it, it's really well done. I um, urge you to, you know, send it to the Board of Supervisors and to also copy all of our state legislators, um, Governor Newsom's office, Secretary of Natural Se uh, Resources. Um, I also urge you to consider um, sending an abbreviated version of it, perhaps in a press release or a media advisory to uh, local and regional and maybe even statewide media, because this is a property that is of interest to all the people of California, since we all own it. And I also think it could be made into a briefing paper um, just to uh, share with our other advisory bodies and other folks um, who might be interested in, especially those who might be new to the issue. So um, I have my own opinions about what I'd like to see there. Um, I definitely err on the side of more conservation and less development. Um, but the letter is just really well done. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the time and your consideration of my comments. Thank you, Terry. And thanks for taking the time to, to make some detailed comments and to attend. All right, and next up we have Linda. Linda, you should now be able to unmute. Welcome, Linda. Um, where can this letter be read at this time? Uh, it should be on the county website, is that right? Yes, it's on the North Sonoma Valley MAC website. Do you want us to? Yes, I didn't see that on, I was going through the forums uh, link and I didn't see the letter. But huh. I, I agree with Terry that it should go to uh, media and, and maybe even invite the uh, San Francisco Chronicle or the LA Times to do a story about it because it is a parcel that belongs to all Californians. Thanks, Linda. And um, if, if you still can't find it, um, send me an email. I think you got my address. So. Um, and I'll send it to you directly. And that'll that'll remind me because I'll probably forget <laughs> by tomorrow. Um, All right. Um, next up, we have Meg. Meg, welcome, you Meg. should now be able to unmute. Hi. Hello, Chair Dawson and everyone. Um, I think the letter is fabulous. I've read it several times. And really, my additions are minimal. But one thing I've been thinking about a lot is the state's 30 by 30 um, goals. And I think that could be added in uh, the letter just really as a, as a heads up to the supervisors that these things are all connected. So under the open space, I think we could add consistent with the state's 30, 30, by, 30 by 30 goals. Um, you know, I was worried about climate resiliency, but when I reread it, climate resiliency is addressed a lot of times. So I really appreciate that because the community surveys haven't really questioned resiliency, but that's all on all our minds. And the only other suggestion I have is the letter throughout talks about the community. And at one point with the fire safety climate resiliency, I think we could add the valley, not just the community, but the valley, because all the fire escape routes and the traffic and hazards and all that stuff affect everybody in the valley. Um, otherwise, I just want to totally congratulate the ad hoc committee and the whole uh, North Sonoma Valley MAC for fabulous leadership. Thank you, Meg. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and um, yeah, good points. And next up is Alice. Alice, she should be able to unmute. Welcome, Alice. Yeah, hi, good evening. Um, yes, I, I think that the letter is just spot on on every, every point, and I so appreciate all the effort that went into it. Um, 
I really also very much appreciate the emphasis, the repeated emphasis on holding the property in a trust. Um, I think that that is so important because uh, to a great extent, public trust in this process has been eroded as, um, as the time has proceeded and the result of the alternatives and um, the degree to which the PAT has been disenfranchised and um, yeah, in light of the most recent um, missteps with the Sinead property, um, the idea of turning this spectacular property over to a developer and then trusting them through the years to do what they're supposed to do and do it right. I don't know. I just like the idea that trust. So um, thank you for really, um, you know, keeping the drumbeat on with that. That's, that's very important and uh, great job, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice. And next up is David. David, you should be able to unmute. Welcome, David. Hi, uh, David Iker here. Um, so it looks like um, you might not have gotten my um, email that I sent off late this morning since you didn't summarize. But anyway, it's oh. short, so I can cop. Uh, I can. I'll yeah, just sorry, I put it in there. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and one is, I see you um, looking at copying uh, state senators McGuire and Dodd. That's good. I think you should also copy Assembly Member uh, Cecilia Aguar Curry. Um, that would be good. Uh, and in terms of funding the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, the bi also known as bi the Bipartisan Infrastructure um, Bill, has potential funding for, um, for the sewer treatment and water recycling and also the energy resiliency microgrid construction sections of the appendix. Um, it's because there's money in in that infrastructure bill for both electric grid and for water infrastructure. And one thing that um, I really don't see very much is talking about, it mentions the affordable housing, but I think really should have something in there about at all income levels, the extremely low income, very low income, lower income and moderate income, not just the moderate income level. Um, because in a recent, um, Sonoma City Council meeting, um, the planning staff acknowledged that for say multifamily um, rental, deed restricted rental, that basically the moderate income level rent paid is the, basically the same as market rate. Uh, and so we need to make sure that the um, all income levels are included, um, in not just in the moderate income level. And um, otherwise, I think everything is, uh, letter is great. It's in the appendix is superb. And I fully support um, sending that out. Thank you. Great, thank you, David. And next up is Deborah. Welcome, Deborah. Deborah. You should now be able to unmute. Good evening, this is Deborah Anita Saka. Um, I submitted a letter to you also where I specifically focused on the um, built environment and um, went into great detail about the need for um, uh, a training center, a tech training center, uh, a training center for people to who want to learn the trades. And I'm sorry that none of that is reflected in your letter, uh, which I otherwise think is wonderful. Um, I, I really feel uh, strongly that we need to look at this property as as a magnificent gift with the potential to improve the lives of the people who live in this county now and in the future. And that means uh, both uh, protecting the um, open space and uh, also using the uh, built space uh, in a way that um, will um, maximize potential uh, for, the, for the young people. Uh, folks growing up here, 
<clears throat> don't have many opportunities to train for things outside of working in vineyards or in the hospitality sector. And I really think that needs to be improved. So I hope you will give some thought to how we might um, look at that existing campus as a training center, both for people uh, who are interested in going into the trades, uh, also for people who want to go into teaching, where, as you know, we currently have a drastic shortage, and also as a training center for people with developmental and physical disabilities. I think there's some magnificent things that could be done with that campus to enrich the lives of everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And next up is Josette. Josette, Welcome, you should Josette. now be able to unmute. Um, yes, I agree that it's a brilliant letter and um, the appendix is great. It just covers everything. And I want to reiterate what Terry and Linda said that I think that releasing this to the media and sending it to our state representatives and the governor would be a great move so that they're really aware of um, what you're doing and what the community thinks. Um, the other thing I want to alert you to is that there's a lot of chatter on social media and local media of a perception that there's a false equivalency of nimbyism as it relates to how, because we're concerned about environmental impacts. And I think in anything that you release, it would be great to say, this is not correct. We are, we are, you know, we are in, in favor of creating something for the community and affordable housing and to get rid of this perception. And you've already seen my small, you know, addendum or, or, or a small input about, I think that you know, uh, transportation, you know, improved transportation for whoever lives and works at the site should be added. So thank you very much. Thank you, Josette. All right. And next up is Norman. Norman, you should be able to unmute. Welcome, Norman. Hey, Norman Gilroy. Nice to see you. Um, uh, an excellent letter. Um, <clears throat> done a few of those myself, and I know how well that, how difficult that is. So much, much appreciated. I'm a strong supporter of the village concept, which uh, comes through your most recent survey and <laughs> now through this letter, um, and um, believe that there's a way to make it a very human-oriented, <clears throat> wildlife-oriented too, but certainly human-oriented neighborhood in which people can actually. Uh, uh, live uh, in a in a, uh, in a in a in a working environment that um, uh, suits their needs, uh, provides them with education, includes a school, all of those things you pro you proposed, and I think that's the core brief you might say for a design uh, that would follow uh, for that, perhaps centered around the central hub there now. Um, however, something like that, which is smaller in scale. Uh, is also particularly vulnerable to um, to uh, the cost problems, uh, making the project uh, 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 financially feasible, as some call it. And in that case, uh, making the best use of existing services is uh, perhaps a, a, a very important um, issue. Uh, in this case, in the in the appendix, you seem to have taken some time to do something of a hatchet job on the 8th Street plant. And though I understand its problems and you've stated them actually quite well, <clears throat> I think that would be better stated as making it an alternative for the, to be considered. Uh, if you include an, a completely new plant on the CDC site, you're settling the site with a very large cost. And uh, if you, Look at the possibility of uh, the the uh, Eight Street plant being upgraded in some way. It's quite possible that the entire uh, um, collection infrastructure would serve the project well. So I would suggest uh, some very small, um, um, uh, how shall I say, it, uh, streamlining of that section uh, to make it uh, less of a of a challenging uh, statement to the. Sorry, Chair Dawson, can you hear me? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Norman, thank you. Um, good good I comments. We'll, audio. we'll consider those uh, when we get to the editing. Thank you.
I'm assuming we oh. have. Chair Dawson, I'm sorry, I lost audio there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my yeah. apologies, everyone. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, um, ready for our next commenter. Um, this yeah. is for Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. Hi, thank you. Uh, Charlie Estadio, I live on Arnold Drive. Um, I wrote a letter, uh, one of the uh, commenters mentioned uh, using the facility for uh, training and uh, especially in, in trades. I, I wrote a letter to the Building Trades Council a couple weeks ago. I'm going to follow up on that. I haven't heard back from them to see if the building trades would want to, um, you know, try to bid for, or, you know, somehow acquire use of these workshops and, uh, and warehouses to train uh, tradespeople, um, building tradespeople. The other, well, I have a question regarding whether the committee uh, has scheduled meetings or met with uh, any of our elected legislators uh, at the, you know, the state assembly woman or the state senator and um, kind of pitched uh, getting them to uh, sponsor a bill, appropriating funds. I mean, this whole this whole thing of the the uh, the SDC being self sustaining. I think it's a bunch of baloney. I mean, how do we? You know, this community is a gem in the middle of the Sonoma Valley, and suddenly it's got to be <clears throat> funded. You know, by some we've got to sell it out to some developer or something. I think that's that's just. Uh, I think that's criminal. Um, I, but I think the way things work in our political system is we have to go to our elected representatives in a small informed group and pitch what we want and get them to say yay or nay and sign on to uh, sponsoring a bill and then, you know, work it out and get, get momentum behind it. Uh, you know, I didn't know if we tried that. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, that's certainly on my mind. And um, yeah, uh, exploring that is down the road pretty soon. I think in, in my mind, I need to, I need to vet that with, uh, with uh, Supervisor Gorin, but um, that's certainly on my mind. And next up we have Greg. Greg, you should now be able to unmute. Welcome, Greg. Am I, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, uh, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about historic preservation. Um, you know, I, I think the letter looks great, by the way. Everything is just right there. But I, I think there's a little bit of a additional language in, that we could add to that. Uh, you know, you know, people want to know why the museum is so important. Uh, well, Diet and Bhatia used the term legacy of care. And uh, yet they, they didn't define legacy of care or even address it in their proposals at all. Uh, it's, it's, they seem to think that if you have a couple old buildings that somehow uh, you're addressing this legacy of care. But that's, you know, a couple old buildings does not tell the story. And that's why having a museum is so very important. You know, we can't forget that there's literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of families that have you know, and, and individuals who have worked at that facility for decades. I mean, we're talking a facility that's 128 years old. And I know personally, uh, many families that have generations that have worked out there. So for the sake of, of the community and, and these people that have worked out there for so long, you know, this museum is very important because it will tell the story. It, you know, it won't just be a, 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 you know, a cluster of old buildings that uh, will kind of like uh, say, oh, well, this is, this is historic preservation. This is the legacy. No, it's not the legacy. The legacy is the stories. And, and, and believe me, the Historical Society, we have it all documented. We have an entire library and artifacts that have been collected for decades. So we need a museum. Uh, and a library and a visitor center. Um, so that's my piece. Thank you. All right, thank you, Greg. And next up we have Elisa. Elisa, you should now be able to unmute. Uh, welcome, Elisa. 
Hi there. <laughs> well, I'm quickly reading through the letter. I didn't know, uh, I did not uh, do it in advance. Uh, and I'm listening to all the comments and I'm really supportive of all the comments and what I have gleaned of the letter so far. Um, the one thing I wanna ch chime in on is the desire to use some of the existing um, infrastructure uh, or buildings that are there um, over a slower period of time with trade emphasis. So that, and I mean, my idea, and I told Susan Gore in this three years ago, maybe, the CCC could come in and learn the skills of remediation and um, do all kinds of things at, at, to slowly cure and heal the land and the buildings there and learn a trade at the same time. It's just an idea, but certainly I like applaud the trade um, training idea because I'm in the building industry. Um, and so I know there's a big dearth of people uh, and too many um, untrained people uh, that they're just, all, all the builders are looking for, for people. Um, so, um, uh, and I don't know if you mentioned anything about the timing and the fact that we were all compressed into a little tiny square of, you know, barely having a breath to supposedly weigh in. I don't know if you did mention that there. Maybe that doesn't need to be said. It's obviously ridiculous. Um, and then the final thing, um, I, I do totally agree with resiliency and the concern that we don't want people to think that we don't want anyone here. We certainly do want people here, but we want one wants to be able to drive on the street and have, you know, access for free, you know, safe um, escape during fires. So, and I do agree that having the valley as part of the area, because the word the community is kind of a little heavy handed through there because it's all based on the, the survey. So I would expand that a bit if you can. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And next is Ed. Ed, you should now be able to unmute. Welcome, Ed. Hi. Uh, I, I've got a, a couple things to say. Uh, probably they're not all going to be really well received. I've got to agree with Greg, Greg Montgomery about about having having a museum, something to something that establishes and maintains the legacy of what that facility was was like. Because not only were there thousands of people who worked there, but there were thousands of people who were treated there too, or sometimes mistreated. We're not supposed to say that, but I know that happened. Uh, I was around 60 years ago uh, when it wasn't it wasn't a great place to be. Uh, my my main concern about the about the property, and I know that the land developers have been looking at this property since I went to work there in 1961. So uh, I, I think we may end up well, we're gonna we're gonna fight lots and lots of money and power uh, in order to to do the things that we'd like to do down the lower parts of the uh, of the facility. But my main concern is the is the is the west and east side of the facility. And I'm I'm thinking that it should go, go into nature conservancy or something. I mean that's 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 habitat for for all kinds of animals, deer and lions and and cougar uh, uh, raccoons. Uh, so that's that's my primary concern. That, that that's my bit. Thank you, Ed. And Chair Dawson just giving a final call for hand. And oh, we've got one more. This is for Nancy. Nancy, you should now be able to unmute. <clears throat> Welcome, Nancy. Hi, Chair uh, Arthur. How are you? Um, I'd just like to reiterate uh, what Meg said about, and also what the last speaker, Ed, just said about making sure we include the valley and not just the uh, immediate community, because not only will the traffic affect the entire community, but just the loss of the gem and treasure for the valley would be uh, fatal to the future of the community of the entire area. Um, I agree with Terry about outreach to the larger um, to the statewide and also probably federal um, since maintaining wildlife corridor is crucial to uh, everyone in the United States. And I also would like to reiterate that we include um, reference to the OPAL Trust that you brought up in your comments, Arthur, 
for Orcas Island because it was a, it's a successful trust that is run by the community for permanent affordable housing. And I wanted to mention that Bill Dodd is holding a community meeting, uh, I think within the week or two, and that perhaps we should um, introduce the notion at that meeting that he should be on board with, um, with what we're trying to do here. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And one final last call. And seeing no further hands. All right, thanks. Um, before we go into oh, the editing, sorry, I just want Chair to- Sorry, Chair Dawson, we got one more. Okay. <laughs> Last minute. Let me share my screen once more. And this is for Bonnie. Bonnie, you should be able to mute. Welcome, Bonnie. Um, sorry to be the last here. I was on another meeting. <laughs> um, I just want to mention, um, someone mentioned about the affordable housing um, specifications and it, so that it's really understood. It's usually it's 30 to 60% of AMI, which is area median income. Those are people on, um, that's the lower wage level um, so that we be sure we really do get affordable. Um, and lower also can much lower than that. Uh, and that meeting that someone just referenced, that's why I got on, it's on January 11th at six o'clock. And if you go on Senator Dodd's um, website, I'm sure you can find that a link to do that. And it's going to be on the radio and case, you know, the local radio station and different places. It's not actually a Zoom, uh, we just talk on a, phone, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. January 11th at six o'clock, Senator Dodd. And the person from the Housing Authority in California and the state treasurer will also be on there too. A good place to go. Um, and also, I just want to let you know that our SDC campus project is now focusing on carbon emissions because our climate is so important and demolition of buildings, especially ones here at SDC campus, and building new buildings is a huge emitter, according to EPA, of our carbon emissions and climate change. So we're doing some extensive research, research and we'll have a paper out on that soon as an addendum to our affordable co-housing at the uh, proposal for the existing buildings. So if anyone wants to contribute to that, you can reach us at sdccampusproject.com. And um, I also want to support all the other ideas for make space, kitchen products, uh, job training, artwork studios, really creative affordable housing and affordable housing that is also for home ownership, which can be creative ways uh, for affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. All right, I'll, I will uh, tentatively close public comment, uh, but if somebody raises their hand in the next minute, we can still accommodate them. Um, so I just wanted to mention while well, before we start losing people, which may happen as we get into the editing, um, that there's a, a ways that you can be involved um, uh, going forward from here is there's going to be a community meeting on January 8th, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, I don't have the exact information about how to how to join, but I think it's on the, uh, the Glen Ellen Forum website. Uh, I think that's going to be 10 to 12. There's going to be panelists from various groups. Uh, I'll be there as a panelist, but also people from the Historical Society um, and uh, John McCall from the Land Trust, a, a whole bunch of organizations that are have an interest in uh, SDC. So that's January 8th, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, it's coming up. Um, also, um, uh, on uh, January 19th is our next regular meeting. We don't have an agenda set yet, so I'm not sure how SDC heavy that will be, but I would really like to encourage people to attend the uh, supervisors meeting on January 25th, where they will be uh, discussing the alternatives for SDC. And it will be an opportunity to put in a uh, comment in support of this letter, if, assuming you support this letter. Um, so the more people we can get there to support the letter, uh, the, the louder our voice will be. So, and that information is on the county website. Um, so that should be easy to Google. Sorry, I don't have the links handy but they're they're out there and uh if, if you really uh need to just contact hannah uh, at the county and she can she can point you the right way if you have a hard time uh finding those things 
Okay, Chair, I think, Chair yes, um, yeah. If you, if you go to eldridgeforall.org, there's a pop-up when you log on to, for this weekend's workshop, if that's of interest to folks. So that's just an easy place to find it. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thank you, Kate. Okay, so um, we're gonna open this up for uh, editing. As soon as Hannah's gonna live edit for us, so she'll, I'm assuming she's gonna have something on the screen in a second. So would you like me to start with the document that's the letter itself or the appendix? Um, I think let's let's take a vote. I, th I think I would start with a letter, but who would like to start with the letter? Uh, raise your hand. Okay, let's start with the letter then. All right. Can I make a quick note, Chair Dawson, as we get yeah. into this? Just, yeah. just a note, guys, because I'm pretty close to this, as you might imagine. So there were a lot of copies about a lot of comments about community, what that meant. So in the second paragraph. We do say the Sonoma Valley Community Survey. If anyone looked at that survey that was done by Shannon Lee, a lot of the res respondents were from the broader valley. That was the intention. However, if that's not clear through the letter, or if we have to reiterate it in certain contexts, maybe fire is a good one, I think that's a good point. But it was intended to be a broader community, um, mm -hmm. just for the record there as we look through this. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Regals. Can I also make a comment before we start? Sure, yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to let the community know uh, several times it was brought up, actually more than several times, that we need to contact specific legislators, the Senator, Governor Newsom, um, uh, the Secretary, the Natural Resource Secretary, and to send this out to the media. And I want the community to know that Matt, Kate, and I had written that in um, and had decided that that would be something that we actually wanted to do also. So I want you to know that that is something that we thought that we would also do. Um, just everything that you brought up. That's great. Well, I can take that off my list now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but if there's anything I can do to help without violating the Brown Act, just let me know. Okay, so I, uh, how about if we just go through this uh, paragraph by paragraph, and I'll just ask for any any edits or changes. Um, and uh, I did take some notes, and I know Kate and Angela took some notes from the public yeah. comments. So if yeah, sure. uh, so, please, if you see an opportunity for those to be incorporated or at least discussed, uh, let us know about those too. So, um, any edits on the first paragraph? Okay, uh, I'll give people five seconds to respond. How's that? So we don't, I don't sit here uh, like a deer in the headlights for too long. Um, okay, second paragraph, any edits? I, I had a question about the first paragraph. Okay. Um, the, the phrase at the direction of uh, Supervisor Super, uh, Susan Gorin, it, it kind of implies that she's directing us to do this. Um, I was just wondering if it might soften it by saying under the authority of or something to that effect. Supervisor Gorn, you want to comment? Oh, you're muted. Here I am. <laughs> um, I want to be really clear that the letter that you're composing is from the North Sonoma Valley MAC, not from me. It may or may not reflect uh, my attitudes. And so I have to remain sort of unbiased in the process. I think it's a good letter because I think it expresses uh, the opinions that you share and many folks in the community share. So, uh, but, but um, don't infer that I'm directing you to develop the letter. What language would you be comfortable with, Susan? Would, would it be just? Just either leave it out or just or just put it um, under the authority of or yeah just just I think the the written and I think it's a good catch mark appreciate it um, just say that um, the North Sonoma Valley Mac has prepared this letter for consideration and just eliminate um, reference to me. Going to struggle with that a little bit, guys, if I may. Yeah, I, I, I thought that that it was a specific. I mean. 
we worked hard on this at an awkward time <laughs> because it was requested. And I, I feel fairly strongly that we can't lose that language without further discussion. But, I, I want to agree with that. I, I, I also heard that it was a request that we write this letter. It's not something that we kind of decided on our own to take up. So I'm, I guess I'm just, if we could clarify that a little bit. I, well, I had the same impression. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the suggestion of Supervisor Gorin, how about that? But really, this letter comes from you. It's not coming from me. The yeah, direction to me could uh, be interpreted as the content and not the uh, process. And so I think that what's clear here is the process. And I think that that's why I was suggesting that. So maybe at the suggestion of, or that's why I thought maybe under the authority of, um, but... Um, or, or you could say um, the North Sonoma Valley MEC uh, has the authority to comment on, um, on items uh, within its jurisdiction. And so that's the authority. It's not necessarily the authority for me. Um, how about, uh, would, how would at the request work? Is that, does that feel a little mm -hmm. better? Well, I still think uh, it would be better at this. If you're going to keep this verbiage uh, at the suggestion of supervisor, um, we submit the comments. Should we take a straw vote? Um, so it's it's either uh, at the suggestion or, um, or at the direction. Are we okay making either or? Yeah, Council Member Handren. So just looking at the language of it, as it as I read it, it it's the direction was in the, we, the direction was to prepare the letter. It, it wasn't necessarily in the content of it. And I think that's how, how the sentence reads. I, in my conversations with your chair, Arthur, I suggested that you work together to prepare a comment letter. Um, so I didn't say it is your responsibility to prepare a comment letter. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Susan. I think, it, I mean, I can read the direction either way. Uh, and I'm fine um, using the word suggestion. Um, Council Member Newhauser. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to open a can of worms here. I, I just but you fine. did, Mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be fine with uh, leaving it out. I mean, we, we are the advisory council we have the authority. Um, I mean, I, I just, I just think it's stronger actually if we, if we say that if we just start the sentence, this North Sonoma Valley Municipal Advisory Council has prepared this letter for consideration. You know, I, I it's, and, and, and I, I would agree with that analysis, Mark, that gives you some level of autonomy and authorship. Well, not only autonomy, but then it also helps to preserve your vote later and um, so that you don't have to recuse yourself. So I'm trying to um, make this clear that this is coming from us and not from you. So, exactly. so I, I, exactly. anyway, I don't want to belabor this issue or get too hung up on it because we got miles to go tonight. Yes, you do. And I'm going to have to leave you shortly. So um, I, I'm because I have another Mac awaiting me and but I'll hang on for another five or 10 minutes uh, just to hear some of your other comments. Um, OK, Council Member Handren. I already made my comment. Sorry. OK, oh, you still hand. Get your hand's still up on this end. Sorry. Um, OK, well, how about let's let's just take a vote or would people be had a uh, vote? yes or no on taking out the first part there and just saying, uh, starting with the North Sonoma Valley Municipal Advisory Council, how many people would be okay with starting the letter that way? Raise your hand if you're okay with it. So one, two, okay, so that passes. So we'll make that edit. Okay, and uh, any other comments on that first paragraph? All right, uh, any comments on the comments or edits on the second paragraph? Uh, 
And uh, Mark? Yeah, um, the, the, the uh, bolded section um, states uh, to um, study a preferred alternative. I just think it might be stronger if we say um, to reevaluate the planning process and develop a preferred alternative that truly reflects the community vision. Um, I don't know if we want them to study it, we want them to do it. Um, so my suggestion is um, to take out a, a study and put in reevaluate the planning process and develop a preferred alternative. Thanks, Mark. I, um, I think that's a good point. I think it starts to get pretty wordy. If, I what if we just said, uh, uh, to develop a preferred alternative that truly reflects the community vision. I mean, that's what we want. We want them to develop, you know, I, I don't know if we, I don't know, reevaluating the whole planning process is wordy and it's, it sounds way more complicated. I mean, maybe it is no matter what. Unless, unless we want them to re-engage with the community. Well, I mean, this letter is, the, is part of their engagement. So um, I'm fine with your edit. All right. Uh, raise your hand if you're okay with changing study to develop. Okay, so we'll make that change. All right, any other edits on the second paragraph? I have one. Okay. Um, I feel that the bolded part should either get its own paragraph or be put in front of the rest of this paragraph because I feel this is the most important part of the letter myself. So you're suggesting just make it a separate paragraph and have that separate paragraph precede the, the sentence that says this letter? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm okay with that if we want to just move it. Uh, I don't, you know, one of the, well, this is just, this, I'm trying not to get into minor points here, but if we, if we create a separate paragraph and we're pushing the whole letter uh, under the fourth page, and it'd be great to keep it down to three pages. Just um, I am sensitive to that. But I would be in favor of moving the bolded section to the beginning of that paragraph and just keep keep it there. How, how do you feel about that? Yep. Okay, well, that's I'll, the reason I'll... it was bolded so that it stood out. I don't really think you need to move it, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what, what do you think, uh, other? God. Committee members. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, one thing. Um, we'll take a vote in just a second. I, I do want to caution us on getting too much into kind of line editing here because I think the letter says it all. And if we could spend hours doing this, right. and then we end up, you know, what, what did Ben Franklin say? A, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. So, yeah. um, which you know, nothing against camels, but. Um, so I want to be careful that we don't we don't get too deep in the weeds here. If, if I can just put that out as a cautionary thing. So I guess my inclination would be just to leave it, but we can take a vote. Um, I also don't want to squelch people's voices either. So um, so how about um, how many? If you would like to move that part of the paragraph to the beginning, uh, raise your hand. So we have two. Okay, so we'll leave it where it is. Um, so last chance to comment on the second paragraph. Okay, let's move on then to the third paragraph. Uh, comments, edits on the third paragraph. Um, yeah, Council Member Eagles. I have an easy one. Um, Shannon Lee did comment to us that, that we have her, her title slightly incorrect. Um, so um, it is, I'm sorry, it's, she's biology department faculty. Um, what do we call her? We, yeah, so she's, uh, where is it? Yeah, right there, there it is. Yeah. yeah, biology department faculty. This appears in the appendix too, but we'll just remember to fix it at some point. Faculty. Um, and I, I guess it always is called Sonoma State University. It, it, it doesn't have to have the formal name. Mm -hmm. So at Sonoma State University, that was her correction. I think that's, unless anyone objects, I think that that's fine. That was from Shannon. Oh, thumbs up if, if you agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. I told you it was an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, Mark, did you have something else or is that just a <laughs> your hand is, <laughs> your arm must be getting tired. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess I can lower that sucker. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on to the bolded paragraph below that, request for community-driven process. Uh, any edits to that? <laughs> okay, good, excellent, we're making progress. Wait, wait, okay. wait. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> no, I, the only thing I, that, I know it seems, it's a small edit. Um, I think we should say until after a new alternative, a alternative reflective of site constraints and community input is developed. Um, uh, let's see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, anybody, anybody have any comments on that edit? So um, I, I'd be fine with it. Is there everyone in favor of adding after, say, until after a new alternative? Raise your hand if you're in favor of that. I, yeah, uh, neutral. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. We, that, that passes. So add after. Okay. Then the last paragraph on the page, uh, which I think goes on to the next page, but yeah, Hannah's going to bring us down there. Um, so any edits on that paragraph? Well, the paragraph continues on to the following page. Um, and um, there is just the there's more than one wildlife corridor um, if, if we're including the stream corridors. So I would just say um, eliminate V and just put uh, make corridors plural uh, in the last sentence. The, uh, okay, I just gotta find it. Uh, okay, so wild, the wildlife corridors on the very last sentence just before water, water treatment. Yes. So just make that plural? Yeah, I would eliminate the V and just put wildlife corridors. Okay, Any, anybody, is anybody opposed to making that change? That's a pretty minor change. Okay, let's go ahead and, and we'll take out the and then make a wildlife corridor plural. Hannah's on it, thank you, Hannah. Um, okay, now we're down to the community priorities. So let's, let's just take these, um, you know, one at a time is under each category. So any edits under uh, open space? Again, another minor one. Um, in the last sentence um, of the first paragraph, it says, as of the highest priority, um, I would just eliminate <laughs> the of. Um, yeah, anybody opposed to that? Raise your hand. Okay, we'll take out the of. I mean, yeah, as Where the highest it? priority. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not seeing that. Councilman oh, New Hazard, uh, could you repeat? So the um, last line of that uh, open, open space, space first paragraph, the oh. last line there, uh, instead of as of the highest priority, just oh. as the highest priority. So take out of. Thank you. Sorry. There we go. All right. Thank you, Hannah. There was a community comment about um, being consistent with the state's 3030 goals um, that, uh, you know, again, we don't want to get this too long, but we want to make sure all points are in. Should we consider that in the appendix? Um, yeah, what do people think about that? Well, I have a suggested um, change for that. I, I got that comment from Meg as well in, in my draft. And um, I had put um, comma, after highest priority, I put comma, consistent with the state's housing goals. H housing or um, 30, 30 by 30? 30, 30. Well, 30, 30, 30, well, maybe you need to explain what the 30, 30 is. It is a housing goal, isn't it? No, I think it's a- No, uh, it is not a housing goal. It's a conservation no, goal. No. Yeah, it's not, it's not a housing goal at all. It has to do with, you know, conservation of natural resources. 30% of natural resources preserved by 2030. That is what 3030 means. Okay, I misinterpreted that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I, um, I mean, we can so consider should we, should maybe the, just say states' conservation goals. Um, yeah, well, I'm thinking, um, I mean, I could see putting in the appendix, but we could, I think, fit it in here if we said, uh, if we just after highest priority, give that a comma and say consistent with the state's 30 by 30 goals. Or we could um, do um, semicolon. This is semicolon. because yeah, yeah the, the survey respondent wasn't necessary. You know what I mean? We don't want to blend the uh, interpretation of a survey yeah, necessarily. That, that be, that's a yeah. little iffy there. I think. So we could do it that way, Arthur, if you're okay with that. And just yeah, the this, semicolon. Yeah, this is consistent. Yeah. 
Okay, let's vote on the semicolon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a frag bit. It's a sentence frag bit. <laughs> I would take a repeat of the sentence if you don't mind. Or the, uh, consistent oh, okay. with the state's 30 by 30 goals. Is that what we agree? Yeah. The states. And I think we can write 30 um, little, you know. 30, yeah. Is it X30 30 30. or just 30? Is it X or by? I'm not it's sure. It's X. It's X. Okay. 30X30. 30 okay. 30. Yeah. Thanks, That's Angela. Yeah. Okay. And, and just to, to feel like this is continue to be democratic, if anybody disagrees with this, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, anything else under open space? Okay. Yeah. Let's move down to um, housing density. Any edits on housing density? We have a suggestion from the, I'm sorry, Mark, is your hand up? I didn't want to interrupt you. I wasn't sure and if again, that was Again, I'm up. forgetting oh, to oh, yeah. my hand, sorry. Um, there was a, um, you know, a, set, um, a comment by the community, as you guys just recall, that, that wanted to make sure, I'm looking for it now, that, that, that this was really implied affordable housing at all levels. Um, do we want to put that here? Um, versus affordable housing at sort of closer to market rate affordability. Um, where is it? I think um, my inclination would be yeah, to put it, was... it in the next category under affordable housing. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Am I in housing <laughs> density? Yeah, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> my agenda is showing. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it is pretty well covered because of the way people voted. Um, housing density, Mark? Well, no, I meant the in the next paragraph about affordability, but yeah, well, we, um, yeah, I'll wait and find my comment. I, I have it, Kate. Are, are you talking about the comment that the uh, public made? Yeah, but sorry, yeah. I'm ahead of myself. Are we still on housing density? Any comment there? I, I think we're. I think we've moved down to uh, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So David Eicher did request that we put in something, and it, he didn't say the appendix or the body of the letter, but that we, it should be very clear that there's something in there for all levels, low, moderate, it, it really needs to be um, expressed, all levels of affordable housing. What if, uh, in order to keep the letter, not to add too much to the letter, what if we put um, a, uh, parentheses after, after the bolded affordable units, see appendix for more information or something? Uh, yeah. And, and then we can just add that. We, add we already that have appendix. C site governance. Uh, mm -hmm. well, so, but I'm so talking about I, the sentence before that. So can I comment on that, Arthur? Part yeah. of the reason uh -huh. we didn't get too far into this is this gets complex, right? And, and we're not mm -hmm. planners. And so we, we could say here, you know, um, mixed affordability housing, we could make it generic, but we were, um, and then someone commented a little later in the public comments about the 30 per 60 AMI level. We didn't feel that we, we were quite um, had the knowledge base and time to, to get that specific um, mm -hmm. at this point. And so I'm a little wary of, of being too prescriptive without having more understanding and knowledge. And that was our, that was our trade off as the ad hoc, you know, if we don't know, we, we can't say, you know, or we shouldn't say. Yeah, and so that that was the concern about putting too much more detail in the appendix. If you know, fellow ad hocers, please comment here. But that was um, um, I from a planning perspective. Some way, but yeah, from a planning perspective, they're very clear definitions under affordable housing. Um, so there's a whole there's a whole criteria of them, characterized by formulas related to income, whether or not they're going to be purchased, very low income. So from a planning perspective, affordable housing is very clearly defined. And, you know, rather than recreate definitions that we are not qualified to create for a general population, I think we stick with what we have produced. All right, um, everybody, anybody, everybody in favor of that, sticking with what we have, raise your hand. Okay, it looks like that passed. So we'll keep it the way it is. Thank you, SDC ad hoc for getting your heads deep enough into this to, to not make those kind of blunders. Um, okay, um, then adaptive reuse. Um, any comments or edits on that one? All right, uh, we'll move on to utility infrastructure. I, I thought the... Um, just to throw out there, I thought the appendix was really well done on this, you know, had a lot of detail. So um, um, 
Matt. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That was Matt. Uh, any any changes? Okay. Well, I, I think that if I may say something, um, uh, I have some concerns about the sewage treatment facility. And if if we do make changes to that, we may want to revisit this in the letter. In the in, if we make changes to the appendix. So um, just want to raise that. Yeah. Okay. No well, we can changes come back at to this that. Time. Yeah. I mean, I think a review of benefits is that's pretty neutral in some ways. I mean, that's just saying it needs to be looked at. Um, I just noticed there's a word. I don't want to get into word smithing too much, but it says as should a thorough. Wait, let me see. Should a company? Okay, never mind. That's good. Just looked weird by itself, but it, it's actually fine. Um, okay, move on to fire safety, climate resiliency. Um, any changes to that? Any edits? This is potentially one area where instead of community, we put put valley. So as I mm -hmm. mentioned, we 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 meant to include valley in our community mention, but if we want to occasionally mention it more pointedly, this would be one place we could about do it. the Sonoma Valley community. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I, Thanks, Matt. That sounds good. I vote for that. Anybody against that? Raise your hand. Okay. All right, I think we can uh, move on to historic preservation. Any edits on the historic preservation paragraph? Yes. Yeah, Mark? Um, I think that the, the very last um, part of the last sentence, all of which would be continuous to the cemetery and open space, um, is a little confusing and um, not wholly correct. And I, I would just suggest deleting it. So just uh, just st end the sentence after visitor center? Yes. Okay. Uh, should we mention, uh, we probably should mention the cemetery, I think. Can I ask that, not to put you on the spot, Angela, but but I think this is part of the vision for the space. Well, and I don't you want know, to just get rid of it without talking more. Well, it, it may be confusing. But the idea is that where these buildings are situated, they are um, situated in a, in a line that goes up to and is contiguous with the historic cemetery up to the open space into Jack London Park. So it is a line that is created um, contiguous, you know, with this area. That, that was the idea behind it. It's a specific spot that is going to be created as an historic district and visitor center that is linked with the, hist the historic cemetery, the historic orchard, the lake, Jack London Park Partners. It's all one connected area. I, I think I understand that, but I also think it might be, um, might be a little confusing to include open space there. I mean, we're talking about historic preservation and, and um, so could we, you know, if, if it contiguous with the cemetery, that works for me because that's all part of the historic uh, landscape. I mean, I, I agree. The other stuff is historic as well, but it's just not quite as. What if we put in um, contiguous with the cemetery, historic cemetery and orchard? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's but it's not really. It, it's contiguous means that they actually share borders and uh, there's open space in between um, each of those land uses and um and it also comes across as being a restriction, like a, um, um, a, a site constraint. That, that uh, but, but if we use the word linked. Or linked or connected. All of which would be linked with the cemetery yeah. and open That's a better space. word, yeah. I like that. If you like that, raise your hand. Yes. Linked. OK, we'll change that to linked. Um, anything else in there? A lot of good public comment about museum, but I think the museum is clearly <laughs> clearly mentioned and clearly yeah. mentioned. Yeah. 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 It's there. <laughs> um, let's see. Are we leaving open oh, space? So I wonder, um, I mean, I don't know if yeah. uh, this, this is just a, I noticed a comment that I wrote down from Greg, uh, which doesn't necessarily need to be here, but maybe could be in the appendix was about, uh, you know, telling a story that there's enough 
that the museum is important to telling the story of the site and it does give the site context, uh, which, which you wouldn't have without the museum. So anyway, that, I think we can put that in the appendix, but I did like that, that perspective on it. And um, so just to, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, no small irony, no small irony that what we're discussing tonight would very likely be included in that museum. <laughs> <laughs> Including There'll be a picture of us on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, and uh, the next one, commercial space job creation. I mean, I, you know, I, I heard at least one or two people, I mean, training, I think maybe uh, I'm just going to throw out, I try not to be the first person to always speak, but um, do we need, here's a question, do we need to highlight the training uh, possibilities at the site you know, a little more um, than, than are there? I, I do want to say, as having taken notes, it was brought up at least three different times that there should be a trade and technical center to train youth. Mm -hmm. So we, we can either put it there or in the appendix, but that was that was a key point brought up several times by people that they would like to see that in there. Yeah. We could add Here's vocational a, training. We could add vocation, the word vocational. Yeah, I would say that, vocational training and leave it. And we yeah. should do it in the appendix. Also, yes. I'd vote for the appendix. Not even yeah. here, not even one word here. No. No. And, and here's the reason why. Because while anybody could wish for a, a specific vocational training center, whether it was for you know, remediation of damaged property or carpentry or high tech, you know, how that is funded is not determined by the community. It's determined by a, you know, a commercial operator. Um, somebody's gonna have to fund that either you know, as a school or as a, uh, you know, as a function of a union, something like that. So I think that sort of falls outside of our own, <laughs> our own projections. I think school collectively covers vocational training. So I think that as an example, it's fine. And also if you add vocational training, you're going to push yourself into a fifth line that will make your letter longer. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, we know, could the, say, uh, yeah, climate research, elementary education, vocational training, climate research. We could get really fancy here, but I'm just joking. Don't, you know, the other thing, uh, the other thing, Arthur, that was brought up several times was um, disability, integrating people with disabilities, and part of that was to create, to have a job section, to have housing. I don't know where we might put that. I mean, we definitely can put it in the appendix, but it was brought up several times. Part of that's there. Could we? Um, we have some we... of that in the appendix, Angela. We do have that. Yeah. Okay. I have. I have actually a specific um, recommendation for that in the appendix. Great. Okay. Could we? Um, one idea to to, to at least um, you know suggest it here. We can, we could take the related job creation and and change related to inclusive. Yeah, that's a good idea. Anybody opposed to that? Where is that, Arthur? Uh, it's, Hannah's got it up right now. So yeah. change related to inclusive. Oh, I see. OK, I think we've, yeah, we're good, Hannah. You can change that to inclusive. Thank you. OK, so moving down, I think, to uh, site governance and financing. Just wanted to acknowledge a couple of mentions of the Opal Trust, but maybe we can look at that, uh, you know, as an example in the appendix. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I do mean the Opal Trust. Thank you. Yeah, I would support that putting it in the in the appendix. Sure, well. I just right. want to commend you on the language she used in uh, very diplomatically putting the uh, failed infrastructure and the unfairness of this economic imposition on the site. So kudos to the author. Yes, yeah, very articulate. Uh, and I well, think we have well to done. acknowledge some community members too, because if it was in public comment, we would pinch it. So thank you, community members. Well, way, to <laughs> glean, way to glean the goods. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we can move on to conclusions. 
so let's let's we'll take this uh let's, there's only two paragraphs so let's take comments and edits on the last two paragraphs Can we change it? Should we say the Sonoma Valley community has spoken clearly? I think that would be a good place to, to use that again. Sure. Anyone else? That's fine. Any, any opposition to that? Uh, I, I, I think it muddies it. I, I like the sentence as it is. Maybe in the previous paragraph, the, com the Sonoma Valley's community's reasons for rejection Okay, yeah. And, and that there's way more not... room for it in that paragraph anyway. Yeah, you got a little <laughs> extra space. <laughs> All right, anybody opposed to changing that to Sonoma Valley Community's reasons for rejection? Okay, go ahead and you can change that, Hannah. All right. Think... Can you make it a possessive? Is it a Sonoma Valley's? Are we doing a possessive? Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Never mind. That's, I think it's correct. That's just, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's my still bad. in four pages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't we managed to keep it on to three, right? No. Where's the, what's on the fourth? Well, there's some CCing. Well, we, let's discuss uh, that. Though. That's who, CCing, who, you, who, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Right. That was for discussion, as Angela yeah. mentioned earlier. It wasn't so much that we were saying that we would do all that. <laughs> but we and, want to make sure we, yeah. Supervisor Gorin is off the phone, but we wanted to actually run it by you guys as to who we should copy on this or discuss with the Mac. Great. And also, aren't they often listed in a column? Yes, they are. Yeah, so that, that makes your letter longer too. <laughs> 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 I think we're resigned to a fourth page. Well, I would I would give Hannah uh, permission to uh, mess around a little bit with the spacing on the lines, if she's if you're okay with that, Hannah. If you, do you, you, know, do you ever a, mess a return after each individual instead of a comment? Uh, no, no. I mean, um, I'm talking about for the body of the letter, so we can keep oh. three pages. Like we could like the spaces between the paragraphs. It could those could be slightly uh, narrowed, and they'd still look like spaces. But um, do you know what and I mean? Yeah, formatting concerns um, we can figure out after the vote tonight too. Yeah. So okay, I, I mean, won't bore you with formatting. Adjustments. Yeah, yeah. If it goes to My, four pages, it's not the end of the world. But <laughs> uh, just um, a question regarding the signature. Um, I think, as I understand it, I think the chair signs it. I'm not sure if, uh, if the vice chair. I think we we discussed this in a previous meeting, but I can't remember okay. exactly how that was yeah. resolved. Anna, do you, do you know? Um, uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, who's who's who are the signatories? Is it the whole Mac? Is it just the chair, a chair and the vice chair? That is outlined in your letter writing policy. If I remember, it is chair okay. and vice chair, but we can double check that. And that's another formatting thing that we can. Uh -huh. yeah, that's that's going to add some length. Yeah. So, well, I, I mean, I, yeah, if we go to four pages, that's not the end of the world, like I said. Um, Um, so we'll we'll follow the protocol that we've already established and forgotten. Okay. <laughs> um, Any other that's... comments on who else should be CC? Everybody. Mm -hmm. The governor. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to be a public letter, so um, you know. I mean, if we forget somebody, you know, it can still be sent out either by us or by a citizen. Right. I mean, somebody could send this to Joe Biden if they wanted to. Not that that's likely to do much good, but you know. It was suggested uh, that we send to C C Celia. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Aguilar Curry. Aguilar? Uh, yeah. And we may want to include the city, uh, Sonoma City Council, mm -hmm. um, since they are. They're, they they're, are there. They're, they're listed, five. Mark. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, you, but I mean, specifically the mayor or? Um, well, I think it, I don't know. My, my impression is it should just go to the whole city council or, or city council care of Mayor Jack Ding, maybe. 
Okay. Do we want to include the uh, Boys Hot Springs Mac and the and the CAC? Oh yeah, I think we should. Thanks, Matt. Before we break tonight, let's make sure because I know we have to go through the appendix. We know how this all happens because we haven't done this before. So, mm -hmm. you know, does does Hannah do this or you know? So we don't have to talk about it right now. I know we have more work to do, but we need to figure that determine how that happens. Right. And through the chair, I believe that's also outlined in your um, letter writing policy. And at the appropriate time, appropriate time, I can pull that up. Okay, right. that'd be good. Yeah, should have should have refreshed my memory. But thank you for being there. It's hard to be refreshed right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, um, so as far as that last, the CC line, I would just uh, just uh, edit out everything between Permit Sonoma and Sonoma City Council. Anybody opposed to that? Are we, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, yeah. There you go. And maybe, um, We're not going to hurt the uh, CAC's feelings by having you guys last, are we, Matt? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, can you remind me who Wade Crowfoot is in real in this context? I think he's head of GSA. Ah. Okay. That's at the that's the state, right? Yes, general services, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I feel like there was someone else that someone suggested we copy, but maybe it was media, uh, but I can't immediately find it. So, okay. Well, again, you know, this is gonna be a public letter, so. Do we know anybody who works for the Hearst newspapers? I don't, but I might have contacts to do. I might know somebody who knows somebody. Probably be valuable. Yeah. But we can have a, that as a separate discussion. Yeah. We have to pitch a story to them. Right. Yeah. Well, this is small town fighting for its soul, right? Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty well said. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> Fighting for its soul against godless developers. Yes, there you go. <laughs> against the dark lord. <laughs> Does that make me Frodo? I don't know. Yeah, we're the we're the fellowship of the ring here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, going going off on. Um, okay, well, um, let's appendix. see. Appendix. Yeah, the appendix. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I think I think we're done with the body of the letter. Do you want to have a call for vote? Well, let's, let's, I think we can vote on the whole thing. I mean, that makes. You mentioned, Mark, there might be a slight tweak to the letter based on the appendix. Maybe not, but for that reason, we could wait. That's true. Um, one other question I had, well, this was related to the appendix, but, um, but one of the categories is open space and um, I'm suggesting that we change it to open space and natural habitat or natural environment, um, a natural habitat or something like that. But we can discuss that when we get to it in the appendix. Um, you, you just gave me a thought for another CC item would be the open space district and the and county parks. Anybody, anybody disagree with putting them on the CC? Oh, that's a good idea. It is. Also, the um, I mean, I'll probably keep thinking of people, and we can always send it out without having them cc'd. But the uh, the, the uh, county historical society, um, you know, I, I know that they're aware of this, uh, but they. What do you think, Angela? Should this be cc to the county society? Up oh, here. Sorry, you're you're muted. Um, yes, we should do that. 
okay. and we can also do the one in Santa Rosa and maybe Gayla Baron from the paper mm -hmm. would be good. Yeah, let's, um, I mean, I, I think it should go to Gayla Baron, but let's not make this too lengthy. Let's, let's mostly keep it like, you know, institutions or, or, um, you know, nonprofits, governmental things. We governmental. Can, I yeah. think it should be governmental, you know. Yeah. It makes it easier for us to define where we're going to send it. Yeah. And through the chair, did I miss one? Sorry, I realized I was not sharing my screen. Uh, the Sonoma part. County Historical Society. Sonoma County Historical, thank you. And Angela, I'm just kind of assuming the Glen Ellen Historical Society will, you know, we're you guys are already, we're already aware of this, so it doesn't necessarily need to be. Yes, we are uh, aware. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and shall I pull up the appendix now? Yeah, I think we're ready. So one, one thought that I had that we could, um, that might help this a little bit would be, you know, we, we got a number of suggestions from, um, from the community on various things. Um, possibly we could just add one more category under this with uh, um, potential resources or something like, um, you know, potential models and resources. You know, the, the Opal Community Housing Trust could just be listed uh, as a bullet point maybe. And, and then we could incorporate uh, a lot of the things that people mentioned, but not have to, you know, wordsmith it in very much. Does that make sense? Well, you do have um, well, governance in there. Um, maybe it could fit into that section. I would add it under governance. Yeah, no, I don't mean, I don't, I'm talking about more um, for the, the, whole, the whole appendix. Do we wanna think about where it's warranted by people's comments? We might just add a, sort of potential models and resources. Like, like there's the other thing about the, um, the infrastructure money, like that yeah, could go under right. you know, potential resources for housing. Um, Cause it's not really general information. It's not really the community supports, but it is a resource that could be tapped. Well, um, under some of these, that. under some of these sections, we indicated, um, you know, potential funding sources. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I would suggest that if we, you know, we'll just have to come across them and add them. I, I okay. wouldn't add any more categories to this. Yeah. I okay. would, and, I would know, urge to sort of incorporate them into what we have existing. Right. And the Federal Infrastructure Job Act was for specifically the microgrid and, and sewer. Mm -hmm. So it was a specific, um, you know, funding mm -hmm. dream. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I don't want to complicate this document anymore. No, um, no let's avoid that. <laughs> yeah, <right. clears throat> um, so one, one edit I can see in the, uh, the second very short paragraph here is, is fixing Shannon Lee's um, title. Title, okay. Yeah, so what do we say? Okay. Biology department faculty, just to reiterate. At Sonoma State. At and Sonoma I, State. I apologize, uh, I gave you wrong. <laughs> Sonoma State University. Yeah. The yeah, link, does anyone know if there is a link to the survey results? I meant to email Shannon. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I couldn't find it. Um, Shannon sent it to me. I can send it to you, Kate. The, the actual Thanks. link, is it on Eldridge for All or something? No. no. She sent it to me as an email. I'll send it to you. No, I have that. Oh, I just that. thought no. for people who want to with that. She wants to link it. Yeah, yeah. it'd be yeah. worthwhile. That would be worthwhile. Hannah, but, Hannah um, will need that so she can add it to the letter. We right. can ask, we just, we'll ask Shannon. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't know if Alice is still on. I was thinking maybe it was on the Eldridge site, but I'll ask out Alice after this call and we can get it to Hannah if everyone's okay with that. If it's no link, then we don't have a link, but we'll try. Okay, any other um, edits on those first introductory paragraphs? Okay, let's move down to open space. Uh, let's, let's just take the whole thing together. And uh, I think that's that should work. Arthur, I um, yeah. just wanted to mention that I sent um, Hannah a copy of 
of what I wrote because it would be too much to um, to have to go over verbally. I thought if people could just look at my suggestions. <clears throat> um, so I'm not clear how we can do that easily in a meeting. Um, through the chair, I do have Mark's doc or council member, council member Newhouser's document, so I could stop sharing this and pull that up. And I guess if there are changes that uh, the council is interested in, I can paste it over to the other document. That's the only thing I can okay. think of. All right. Should we? Anybody disagree with doing that? All right. Let's let's just go ahead and look at Mark's document. Don't be shocked. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so just a general comment before we jump in. Um, I'd mentioned earlier, and, and I think someone else mentioned as well, um, to have consistency between the sections and to add in, you know, where there's missing potential funding sources, uh, benefits, community benefits, as well as um, a new section I'm recommending, which is recommended actions uh, slash uh, site constraints. And um, so they, in the first paragraph, I'm just suggesting the, some additions um, under community support um, that, that we also include a land trust. I, mean, I don't know if we need to specify a specific land trust, um, but that um, in addition to uh, regional or state parks. Um, I'm also suggesting that, um, you know, we're, we're not just looking at continued uh, access because we also want to plan that access carefully uh, in wildlife corridor area. So I thought that maybe we could just kind of finesse that by saying well-planned public access uh, to open space. Um, so that, you know, it doesn't say we're cutting off open space, but that we're <clears throat> wanting to plan access so that it doesn't disrupt uh, wildlife movement. Um, we've also added in streams uh, because I think it's really important to mention streams as being um, a specific corridors, wildlife corridors as, um, and worthy of mentioning. Um, and uh, for not only providing permeability, but also related to natural resources. Uh, and um, anyway, you can see my comments and um, mm. I just think it's important to mention these other elements because they were um, not included. And I think that they're relevant to inclusion. Um, um, Mark, I just have to ask you, is, is the whole document like this? Because this is going to take many hours, yeah. um, so I'm a little, it's a little, I'm a little scared at this point. Um, well, um, too bad. Yeah, I have a lot of... <laughs> one of the, one of the things that I really feel strongly about is that um, you know, we mentioned in the introductory letter that we're going to have um, performance measures and site constraints, um, and then they were not included. So, um, so I wrote um, suggested or recommended actions or site constraints uh, to complement the letter. Can we, can we, oh, sorry, Mark, um, were you, were you I, about to say more? Because you were saying more there, Mark? I wanted to comment on the overall process here a little bit. Um, I, that's basically it. Uh, I'm just looking for consistency and completeness and some specificity so that um, I, I just feel strongly that having specific recommendations is important because as Susan requested and as the, um, um, as the uh, planners have, have stated that they want not just to know what we don't want, but what we want specifically. And it seems like everything that we're asking for needs to have some performance measures or site constraints in order to protect the resources. I disagree with that observation entirely. I disagree with that very, very strongly. You know, we are not planners. 
We are not, none of the us are. And, you're, and you are dictating terms to a developer, a planner, and none of us are set up to do that. You know, it, it takes staff time. It takes drawings. It takes an enormous amount of time on the part of many people to do that. And I, I totally reject that. I totally reject it. But do you disagree with any of these specific recommendations and site constraints? Well, look, before I mean, we go there, before we go there, I think the idea of the letter was that we didn't know all these things yet and we didn't have time to explore them. And so a lot of these, I, you know, I, I think we're getting, we'll have other chances to comment in this process. So I think we have to sort of determine what's important right now to get across and what is a little bit of an overreach for what we know right now. So Mark, I don't know that it's that, that we disagree or that I disagree that I just don't know that we're quite ready to go this far and that we can do this tonight. And so that's, that's my concern here. So I'll but, but I think that, that what we've, what we're, we've, what we're failing to do is include many of the comments that were made um, during the public process. And a lot of those comments included specific site constraints or performance measures. Um, and in fact, we refer to them in, by referring to the letter from the Sonoma Land Trust. Uh, what was not included were many of the references from the Sonoma Ecology Center. And um, I think it's an oversight by not including those things that have been specifically mentioned. We're willing to mention other things that have been mentioned by one or two members of the community, but I think that we're not mentioning the requested site constraints and or performance measures that have been recommended by specific community members. And that's what I'm trying to capture here, many of which, as you'll read. But Mark, here, you, you, you're <laughs> referring to community members, but you develop these, these changes here. And we don't know who those community members are. They're not referenced. They're, you know, for all that we know, you just decided which things you just you determined on your own mm -hmm. to include and what not to include. So here is what I would propose. We have we have a quorum of people here, and we can and we can figure out how to vote on what we're going to do here, because. This is way beyond the scope of what we were asked to provide, asked to present, asked to compose. And as has been indicated by Kate, there is gonna be ample opportunity to make sure that anything that is a site constraint is followed, but we don't get to determine that. It's developed, <laughs> a lot of these things are developed by code. You know, we, we're not in a position to determine building code or, or planning code. We cannot do that. And, and, and I would argue that it pushes up against the envelope as to what the MAC is actually allowed to do. So Mark, here's a, here's a thought. Um, thank you, thank you, Matt. Um, and, I, and I agree with, um, you know, with your comments about, you know, what are we, what are we actually doing? And, and, um, but, you know, I, I know when the EIR is, you know, there's the, and I don't, I've never been through this process before, but, um, you know, when they, when they set up the EIR, you have to mention what, uh, what they're supposed to study, right? And so, you know, at that time, perhaps we could write a letter, write a second letter that just says, here's what we want to see covered in the EIR. And one would be scientifically supported stream setbacks, you know, and then, and then it's sort of taking it off of us, like, we don't have to go to the See, one of my concerns is if we go to the community with something that's so specific that we're going to find more opposition. At this point, we're looking for partners. We're looking for people to, um, you know, to support this letter. And if we get too specific, I think we may lose some of that support. I mean, it might happen eventually anyway, but um, I would be concerned about that. Yeah, um, Susan. I agree. Oh, just, uh, hold on just a sec. Um, I agree, and I do this for a living, Commissioner Dickey. And um, the performance specifications, I agree with what you said, that th this should be at a high level. And I think that the tone of this, uh, of this document is correct for now. 
and performance measures come in at about two stages down the line. So uh, it's too specific for right now. I also want to say I, I, I have to stand with Kate and Matt on this. And, and Mark, I do understand that and respect your passion for detail and the environment. But I do want to let you know that we did look at the comments, Matt, Kate, and I. We scoured those comments. We looked at what the community wanted. And we are, as Arthur said, giving this general impression back to the supervisors about what the community wanted. And we just can't go into this much detail. It's difficult. And, and I do agree with Arthur that I think it will sort of shoot us in the foot if we do. Um, but I respect you know, your, um, your views on this. But I do think, I agree with Matt, that we should maybe put it to a vote. Because, yeah, it seems like you're probably- Well, I was, uh, I was fully expecting to have some pushback on adding a whole nother section to this. Um, and I'm not attached to having uh, recommended actions or site constraints in there, but I do think at some stage um, that does need to be developed. And, and if, if, if they're not part of what the community states that they want, then we'll never get it. And the property won't be protected. We won't get the setbacks. We won't get the protection of the corridor. And um, I think that at some point we need to do that. And I'm, Please. I'm really, I'm really That's sorry. That's a projection. I'm, That's a projection. I'm, Please. And I'm really sorry to hear you Matt don't know say that, that I'm sure. making this up because I'm not making this up. This has come from many different uh, uh, community members. So I, I'm really sorry that you're projecting that this is not relevant, but- um, Mark, but, can I okay. say- We're not saying- Can I say one thing? Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about the wildlife corridor and, um, and I also know that the land trust is working really hard to, to protect particularly that aspect of the property. And so it's not just us, there's a lot of other people working on, on all these different issues. And, and in my mind, people who are, you know, not that we don't all have our, you, I mean, you've got a lot of expertise in this um, and the land trust has a lot of expertise and they have the, the resources to really, um, you know, to really, they've, they've talked about looking at, um, you know, performance standards and they wanna study those and they haven't done that or they, they haven't fully done that yet. They're in the process of studying that. So I, I'm kind of, I'm with Susan. I think we should leave this, this piece for later on. And, and we may have to not, uh, you know, we don't really have land use uh, authority. I mean, except that what we've been given right now for this. So it's hard to say how far we can push it uh, as, a, as a body. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to push it as far as we can, but I'm, I'm not sure how far that, you know, ultimately probably the CAC is gonna, is, is gonna be uh, more involved than they have been. And I appreciate Matt's, um, you know, Matt's engagement there. So, um, well, okay. So let's just, you know, I'm not going to fight back. Um, I, I'm fine with, uh, you know, if if people don't want to have recommended actions, um, then that's fine. Um, but I would like uh, consideration of the language within the other sections that are included. Um, yeah, I'm good. Are people okay if we if we move down to the next section and see um, see how that looks? And through the chair, yes. do we? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, continuing on with this document here, or going back to yeah, going the going original? down. Um, okay. okay. Going down on Mark's document, I think. Um, um, so, Mark, what I I think what I'd like I'd like to request you to do is to, as we're, as we're looking through your document, um, you know, if, if there's, if there's certain things that you feel are just, you know, the, the highest priority that need to be changed, you know, uh, right now, I mean, you've kind of said, you feel all this needs to be changed, but um, if there's, if there's something that really stands out as, as missing, as a, as a, as an element that's missing in the, in the original document, not, not a detail, but an, an actual element that's missing, then I wanna make sure we cover those. Does that, uh, how does that sound? My edits stand. 
um, as a request. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if you can either consider them or not, um, I, I submit to you the edits that are highlighted. Mm -hmm. and, um, and whether or not you want to add potential funding sources, I mean, I would trust the ad hoc committee to decide whether they want to add in the other language for consistency, you know, like the potential funding sources and, um, and, and benefits, the other sections, uh, because I think that um, it would benefit from having that in each section. Um, but am I... I mean, this is probably the most extensive edits is it just in this first, the community support paragraph under open space. Um, I do have some questions in some other sections, but they're, they're relatively minor comparatively. Well, um, why don't we well, go to those? Let's go to those and then observe. Okay. Yeah, And I have to say on this section, and most of these are, are our, our word improvements. I, I really don't yeah. know much about the potential to transfer this to a land land trust. So I can't really speak to that right now. But the other edits, I don't uh, immediately see. Um, I, I don't have a problem with, you know, we weren't consistent for funding sources for some of the things like open space, because it just, you know, just didn't seem to be as um, pertinent, but if, if anyone has an objection, I don't have an objection to putting in grants and developer funds. I just don't know that it, it adds a lot. So I'm open to that. Uh, that's you know, my two cents, but I don't know how much time we're, we wanna spend on this. Um, let's see. Um, Cause the, the yellow is the, the new others. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Matt wants to look, look ahead. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's good. Let's do that. So actually, so, Kenny, you mind going back up? I think uh, I just any, know. any direction as to where to scroll. Yeah, sorry, yeah, okay, let me know. I think this is the next. So, um, I mean, I, I'd be happy to. Higher. What's that? A little higher, yeah. Um, so Arthur, there I just want to ask, um, the yellow are marks how, what he wants to change, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Or so, additions. And uh, blue. Or additions, right. Blue yeah. is just comments. Just so what if, what if we, I think there is, there's less, what if we look through, at least begin to look through this part and, and there's a lot less change down here and then, and then we'll see how we feel about making more of the, the major change on the first page. Like, like uh, I'd be fine with adding uh, benefits, uh, reduced density, reduces most impacts that cannot be feasibly mitigated by design. Um, I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah, I, I hate to wordsmith this too much because it is really. I, I really feel like it was well done, and it's not that. Um, uh, like the rural character, that's that's. I think that's mentioned in the letter. Yes, it is. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, I appreciate all the work you put in this, Mark, and I and I'm wondering if maybe, if there would be a way to. Um, to take these ideas and maybe um, put them into a, a separate document or a, uh, which we could vote on on the 19th possibly, or which we could, you know, maybe you could just say we would like to adopt, I don't know, I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, um, or if maybe if this is something that, you know, when the EIR comes along, uh, we could do a letter for that as well, you know, the EIR preparation, whatever that's called. Where you you put in, um, and you know the other thing is is that um, you know certainly I'm hoping I'm going to get to talk directly with the supervisors. So that's I mean one of the biggest points I'm going to make is that you know we want the density reduced, we want the numbers reduced, and reducing the numbers of housing like that alleviates a lot of the concerns about this project. Just that alone, just you know cut down the number of houses and you know, the traffic in the springs is going to be better. The evacuations are better. It's just, it's so uh, there's other ways these messages can get out there rather than necessarily in this, you know, in this document. 
So if we're if we're examining this particular highlighted area, I don't see that it adds much to the document. I'm not sure that it's necessary, and we uh -huh. should just keep moving on here. Okay, because let's, let's... you're you're trying to be kind, Arthur. You know, and I appreciate that. You know, and we're trying to be supportive of Mark's efforts, but. I mean, we have time constraints we have to face, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and and it it feels like it's being hijacked out of out of kindness rather than practicality, honestly. And I'm not trying to be cruel here or anything. I'm just I'm just speaking my mind. Yeah. OK, well, let's, that, that let's... is kind of cruel because um, basically you're saying I'm hijacking the process and um, I'm am contributing to the process and requesting uh, consideration of the language that I've proposed. And, it, and I have as yet to have a vote on a single word on this document. And it's, um, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> okay, here's. I'm, I'm sorry, can but this, I, can this, I this feels question, like a perversion Arthur? of the public yeah. process. Uh, I, I have two quick questions. Angela, one, yeah. yeah, one is, do any other council members have edits that they would like to see? And could other council members comment on this a lot? Yeah. Other than Matt, myself, and, and, and Kate, because mm -hmm. we're pretty close to this. Could we hear from other council members about their, their, their thoughts on this? I mean, here's a, here's a thought. Let me just throw this out. I, and I, Forgot to say this at the beginning, but we really are trying to avoid line editing. And I'm afraid a lot of what you've got, Mark, is line editing, at least in that first page. And I really, I, this is where we're going to, you know, this, this, is, this is what takes, you know, it's just time consuming. And, um, but anyway, so I'd, I'd like to discourage us from line editing this, but I would, I would be open to going through, um, you know, the rest of your document. And if there's, if there's something that's not in the original document, then you know that's not just a line edit that we could consider that adding that um and i think that could be pretty pretty quick so i would just like to comment that we as a um we really put our trust in the committee to develop this letter and to really i think they've really done a good job at um reflecting the community's comments and um I trust that the, in the work that they've done in reviewing those comments and making sure they're reflected in the appendix, and I'm happy with the way it is. Thanks, Vicki. Yeah, Damon? I think several people on the uh, group already tonight have expressed that this is stage two or three uh, kind of information that you would have more detail as you're working along, and I think that we have the amount of detail in the appendix now. There may be a couple of words in there that somebody has, um, and I'm not saying any of the words that Mark has are not appropriate, especially in that opening paragraph, but it's overwhelming the amount of changes and the detail that he wants to go to tonight. And so from my view, I think that we were already almost there and we should limit it to uh, limited changes and move on. All right, it's so not that I'm gonna- many, really. um, um, I'm sorry, but I'm, you know, I'm not requesting that many changes. If you eliminate all of the uh, sections on recommended actions, um, say as a next tier step, um, there's not that many changes. And I do have some questions and maybe we could just skip ahead to the sewer treatment water recycling section because that's the most troubling one I see. Um, we have tough. other members of the community, our commission, our committee who want to comment. You know, I, I really have to agree with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, Damon, that a lot of this stuff seems like, you know, phase two or three that we're not, we're not there yet. And we're just, you know, we were trying to get this out to the supervisors to express the community's opinions and, and vision. And, uh, you know, this, this stuff, you know, will eventually be be looked at much more in detail, and I I wonder. Uh, I'm just not quite sure where to put this. I don't think I don't think going to this level of detail right now is is 
is serving us on several levels. You know, do we really uh, want to propose a putting a sewage water treatment on SDC? You know, I I don't know. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I because that I've heard, I don't remember it, the public commenting on that. This looks like wholly new, novel information here, and I'm questioning the accuracy of this. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I, you know, you know, we were presented this document two days ago. Um, and if, if we can't, you know, I've done my homework and I, I've done some research on this and I'm, I have questions. So I'm sorry if, if, if the, at, at, you know, if the ad hoc committee doesn't want to discuss it or accept any changes to this document, that's troubling to me. Like to I would like to look at that section, Mark. I, I and I we had community comment there. Um, I would like to, I think that's reasonable to look at that section um, and others too. But can we look at that section? All right. Are and, we? Yeah. Uh, if you're willing to look at that section, raise your hand. I'm, I'm willing to look. And I want to say, okay. not only did we have community comment on that, but we had community comment again tonight on that. <laughs> So Hannah, we're moving down to the, uh, whatever it's called, the sewage and infrastructure. We did, and the comment tonight was maybe to soften that um, because maybe, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to, to reinforce the 8th Street site and not look at a new site. So um, right. that's, so, but. So. Um, May I make a suggestion? Yeah, we're looking at Mark's edits, but we're not looking at the original document. Yeah, it makes it a little confusing. I would agree. It does. Uh, Mark, can oh, yeah. you give us the color codes? Is all the yellow new and all the blue changed? Yeah, or? and if you yeah. look at the yellow, all I did was I moved what was in the benefits section to the general information section. So there was just there was some sections that were placed, I think, incorrectly. Um, some were benefits, some were general information, um, and I marked that accordingly. So the blue is just comments, and the yellow is the language. And that's why that currently from the sanitation district, I moved that from the benefits section because it's not really a benefit. It's just more of an explanation, a background general information. And also accurately, it's called the Sonoma Valley County Sanitation District. Um, and I think that the effluent is actually being discharged into Shell Creek. So I think that needs to be corrected. Um, I don't disagree with the problems with this. Uh, I think what was a little bit disturbing is saying that, um, you know, that, that, that somehow the addition of development on this is gonna make it worse. And also there's a lot of new information about um, sewer main replacement of which the county could argue will then handle any further development. There's also new developments that's going on um, south of Sonoma where they're putting in whole new infrastructure. Uh, I'm just wondering how, if we can make these claims, it's sort of like what um, one of the commenters said tonight was, uh, what was the term he used? Um, <laughs> basically a hatchet job on the, um, 8th Street water treatment plant. Um, I just don't know if we can make that claim based on the improvements that they're currently under, under that are underway. Um, so I, I, I'm, I, I don't oppose the idea. It's just that none of the plans that I've seen include a, a, a treatment plant on the facility. And I don't know how the public's going to feel about adding that. Um, so I, I just I was just wondering where that came from and whether or not. Well, the, um, I just want to say the other thing that it was Norman Gilroy who commented, mm -hmm. and he did say um, to actually try to streamline that section rather than add more to it, and to consider um, making it an alternative site, connecting with the Eighth Street East rather than to make it a new a new plant. That was his comment. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah just to make that clear. Well, um, here, here's, here's my observations. It has, a, it has a great deal to do with water recycling. And when we started the public comment period for this, this SDC 
pr project back in 2016. We weren't faced with the kind of drought and fire problems that we've had. So increasingly water treatment facilities and water recycling and wetlands and fire resiliency are all tied together. And so that would be my observation is that it's not really a separate thing from fire resiliency, from wetlands, from water recycling. It's all integrated. And the reason you need that plant or, or it would be nice to have it there is because then you have access to all those things rather than 13 miles down the, the Sonoma Valley, that water to be recycled is never going to make it to Glen Ellen. It will never be, it will never be recycled this far. And additionally, uh, the water sustainability um, project that is now being examined by the, you know, by a, a local committee and then has to be completed by, you know, by the state, they're saying that the water down there, the water level is increasing. And how do you treat that sewage water as we increase the number of houses that are gonna need to, to, to you know, make use of a sewage system that likely won't be functional in 15 to 20 years because of the water uh, the salt water intrusion into the aquifers. So, I mean, we can do whatever we want here, but we're trying to look to the future. We're trying to look a hundred years to the future or 30, but don't look to the present. No, I'm with you on this, Matt. I, I think it's a great idea. I just don't know if it's actually uh, been vetted in the community enough to support at this point and um, whether or not the county would actually acknowledge the failing systems or the vulnerability of the systems. So I'm just, you know, I'm just asking the question here and also to, you know, basically say that, that, that this development at S, proposed development at SCC will actually cause more frequent overflow problems. I just don't know if we actually have that evidence. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, well, a, it's a bold claim. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I'm, you know, this is this is all way outside my wheelhouse. But um, I mean, I remember at the Ecology Center, I worked off of some fine money, you know, from the sewage plant. I mean, that was years ago. So I, you know, I don't know how. I guess the way I think of this document is this, this is ideas for us to look for the county to to explore. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we got a couple of our facts wrong, but but the general idea that Matt's talking about of having recycled water, you know, on site. Um, you know, that's all tied in with, with um, you know, fire uh, safety and resilience, all that stuff. That, that all makes sense to me. So I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with leaving it more or less the way it is. We could move that one paragraph up about the fine. Um, but, you know, this, this, is, this is still really just a very much an outline of what we want the county to consider. Okay, well then uh, let's just move on then. Um, so in the next section, there was just one other one that um, where I think it needed to be moved. Um, the infrastructure requirements. Um, I think it's under community yeah, there. Uh, scroll up a little bit. Uh, infrastructure requirements associated that was in the paragraph below under potential funding sources. I would just move that up into um, to community benefits. Uh, All right. Again, it's just it's just not a funding source. Okay, so I just you know just trying to put so it in. All, I, I have no problem with that. All in favor of making that change, raise your hand. Aye. Okay, that passed. So, we, so is that two change. moves? There was some other. There was the other move too. The currently the the cross hatched move as well, right? And the yellow move, I think. Uh, oh, the one up wrong? above. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. through the chair, um, is it all right with you all if I return to the um, the first document so I can make those changes there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Please. All right. And my apologies, but you'll have to remind me on the change that you would like to see. Uh, let's see, it's up, I think it's up a page. 
and I'll let Mark, Mark knows it better than I do. So, well, I have a copy in front of me, so maybe I can help direct a little bit. Um, so it's on page, uh, page five. Um, I think it might be up from here. Yes, I think it's up. Let's climb it. Yeah, let's climb it. Yeah. Uh, one, one, let's see. It starts with currently the sanitation district pays a fine. It might and be further be, down because your document uh, has more content. So it might be actually later than five. No, I think it's, it's oh, above. It yeah, it's above because it's above the, <laughs> uh, no, no problem. I just happened to, yeah, keep going, keep going. There it is. There's local sewer district fees. There's one. Um, well, that's funding. Never mind. Let's see. Oh, currently, there it is, Hannah, right, Mark? Currently, the sanitation district pays yeah. a fine. That's yeah. gonna, that's, that bullet moves up, uh, moves up, right? Yeah, I think yes. that's right. It moves up into under general information. And also, I, I would make the changes. I mean, I don't know if, you know, just unless you're absolutely certain, um, Matt, that the uh, it, it actually discharges into Nathanson, but I've been told that it was it actually discharges into Shell Creek, um, at least the 8th Street plant. Now, the other treatment plant that's down off of Shell Road may actually discharge into Sonoma or Nathanson, but, um, but that's something. Well, that's the reason that I use the Nathanson Creek system, because again, I, th I think of them as being tied together. You know, ultimately, these waterways are not all singular waterways true. And like, out into the bay. They're like tributaries to each other. Yeah, correct. But it, it is called the Sonoma Valley County Sanitation District, and that's under the first bullet. Yep. Um, and um, and it's somewhere else, too. It's in the second bullet or third bullet under um, community benefits. And one other suggestion is I, that I had was um, under community benefits, um, you're saying a sewage treatment facility would be cited on the STC site. Um, it, it sounds like a recommendation. I'm not quite sure why it's worded that way. Can we just say could be cited? Would that do it? I would agree with that change. Me too. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. Could be cited. There was another bullet point move, Mark. Um, it was yes. the second um, one we voted on. Yeah, oh, okay. Moving down, um, it was um, under potential funding sources. It the um, I think it's the fifth bullet infrastructure requirements. That gets moved up to the section above that community benefits. That is community benefits, I trust. I think it is. We can't see the header, but I think it oh, is. Sorry, I'll scroll that's, up. Oh, it's, it's okay? a little widow there. Yeah. That's community benefits. Okay. Yep. There's some weird space after East on the upper, up, upper page, Hannah, but you'll probably see that later. There it is. Oh, you saw it, you knew it. You knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it too. I take my direction from the council. <laughs> Mark, could we, um, would you be willing to have us uh, say, we'll give you like, I don't know, three or five more changes. We'll look at your document. We'll consider three to five more changes and then, then we'll, move on so we can keep our time limited and you can you can decide which ones you want to you want us to work on uh, if that's uh, sections three or five three to three sections I could probably go with that all right let's give that a shot so we'll go back to Mark's document look at three sections um, why don't we do the fire safety under um, yeah, fire safety slash climate resiliency on page seven. 
And through the chair, would it be just for the sake of making the changes? Is it possible to work from this document? Um, it's I'm I'm if Mark is okay working from this document on screen, uh, I'm okay with that. I can just verbally say what I'm suggesting. I uh, I guess. Okay. I, um, yeah, let's try that. Well, I've learned a lesson tonight: never submit a a heavily marked up document. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, so under general information, um, I would like included in their uh, stream and wildlife corridors. Um, I uh, you, you have underneath their wet water treatment, um, and I. Where is that? Where's the water treatment? Well, it says, okay, under the first oh, right bullet, under oh, yeah. the first okay. bullet, it says many of the appendix items address this indirectly, including water treatment and wetlands as fire protection. And uh, I don't really understand how water treatment provides fire protection. I know that uh, that that um, wetlands um, and- Matt, you want to answer that? I think you probably yeah. can answer that easily. When energy grids fail, gravity for water um, pressure is pretty important. And so having a water source up valley for that's whether it's treated or untreated, I, I just think of it as being an additional fire resiliency layer. Um, and again, I keep emphasizing this point. All of these things are tied together. It's a web of, of relationships, fire resiliency, you know, infrastructure development, microgrids, uh, you know, wildlife corridors. All of these things are tied together. They're not, they're not individual items. So when we talk about water treatment as a fire resiliency item, does anybody out there think that it's not? You now have a source of water that's up valley that can be used to fight fires. And it's not reliant on an energy grid that may have been compromised by any number of things. And we talk about fire, but you know, we forget that we live in an earthquake zone. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Matt. So Mark, um, what, what changed you want to see? In this section, um, that I had a concern about with um, uh, is that uh, the evacuation uh, bullet um, just um, it's under yeah it's just the third bullet although I'm not seeing it here for some reason third bullet under climate resiliency or oh and second bullet evacuation plans and road rate preparedness oh. You know, something's the formatting's not right there. I think that's supposed to be a third bullet. Uh, everybody in favor of making that a third bullet? Raise your hand. Well, well no, I'm just saying in the version that no, I don't have, sent to I, me. Just, yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Let's just do it. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Oh, okay. I think Unless it might somebody, have just gotten truncated somehow. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, um, but anyway, okay. my suggestion for this one is that the the road roadway preparedness is 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 vague, um, and um, I, I think it has to do with the evacuation and roadway capacity. Um, so, so Mark, I I, I don't want to, let's let's I'm trying to avoid getting us down in the weeds here. It's it says it's our understanding that the EIR will address these issues. Do you disagree with that? It's one of the, I, I don't disagree with that. It's just that it was, it's probably one of the biggest issues that the community had. I mean, one of the most, most um, obvious problems that was actually quantified by the county as being a problem was the traffic standards and the, and the, the F rating and 
and the questions, the repeated questions we got about having inadequate ability to evacuate with heavy traffic. So do you want to just, and, can we just add a sentence that says that? There are uh, big questions related to um, the ability of the roads to handle large scale evacuations and then just keep, uh, it's our understanding the air will address these issues. Can we just say that related or big questions uh, related to the ability of our roads to handle large evacuations? However you want to word it. I just think that the roadway preparedness was too vague. So um, I, I, mean, I would you, just, I would just let, add that after big questions. Any uh, people who agree about, with that? How about roadway emergency preparedness? There we go. Okay. Leave it. Do you agree with the roadway emergency preparedness? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and make that. Okay, next next point, Mark. Uh, let me just go to the end. I don't think I have any other recommendations. Um, well, let's see. Under this is just a question. Under the community center, you have. Um, adaptive reuse of an existing building under funding sources. Um, and I, you may want to just move that somewhere else um, or define how that is a funding source. Well, I, I sort of thought it was pertinent there because rather than having to build and design for new construction, we could take advantage of a building that's that's existing and and make use of it rather than design build and and identify space for it that was the only you know and is it a money saver yes it is but how about, how about just adding as a cost saving measure sure sure everybody in favor cost saving cost saving reuse of an or as an additional cost saving uh However, that was worded. Measure. <laughs> Measure. Yeah, that might solve that. But thanks for the explanation. You're you're saying it's moving ready, right, uh, Matt? More or less. Well, I think it's just the idea of saving money that way. Yeah. Yes. Good. So the right. last section is really the first section, um, in uh, which was under open space. And um, I, I, I still feel that, that we should include a land trust. I think in all of the comments and a lot of the suggestions that were made, there was acknowledgement that much of the land had already been transferred to the regional park and to the state parks, but that the remaining land uh, was there seemed to be that the community comment was about having that be under the control of a land trust rather than the parks. And I, I have not gotten the impression that any of the parks were willing to take the remaining 700 acres. So I, I just thought that we should include a land trust in there as one of the possibilities for being the recipient of these lands, of these I, public I lands. Can, I can live with that. Do you agree with me? Raise your hand. We, Hang we on a minute, guys. That in governance. And, and the, the properties have not been transferred yet, just to be right. clear. And we what? did try to address that under governance, which is near the end. So I don't, you know, I think a trust could be considered, but I just want to be very clear because I that was really pointed out pointedly by, by Tracy Sacido last meeting that that hasn't happened yet. It, it's slated no. to happen, but it actually mm. hasn't happened yet. No, I'm talking about what has happened already is the upper orchards and the lower part of the property that's already been transferred prior to this process. No, um, that's not true. No, the, the orchards were transferred to Jack Glenn Estate Parks many years ago. And uh, the regional parks assumed the lower portion of STC several years ago as well, right? That is not my understanding. Um, well, well anyway. I, know, I know the um, the orchard of Jack London was is that's now Jack London definitely was part of part yeah. of SDC. That, that definitely was a transfer that was made. I'm not totally clear on how the the regional park might have originally actually been 
part of SDC. I'm not sure about that. That was longer ago. No, it's just that strip that's along Highway 12 that was um, mm -hmm. transferred to regional parks uh, years ago. But but um, yeah, my I feel like we're getting down what, into the weeds on this. What, but what, we're, what, we're, but what we're talking here? about is the transfer of park adjacent properties, the additional ones, right? Or is that is that what you're implying? Is the 700 acres? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 700 acres. So do we not want to include um, the open space district or a land trust as one of the potential recipients? It's under governance at the end. We address some of that in governance. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm confused on what portions of property are not being transferred to either park. Uh, I think we're getting too far into the weeds it's here. A little we bit, are. Yeah, it's you a know, little bit. Know. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, you know, there's going to be, this is not going to be a perfect document. There's going to be gaps and errors here and there that either, you know, we made because we didn't know enough or because things change in the future. And I, so I, yeah, I just, I think if we're trying to get a general idea of what we want here and I, and I think that captures it. So, um, so you don't want to include land trust there. I thought that there was well, some agreement. I, well, I would be that. okay. Okay, let's, let's just vote on who would, who would, um, if you're willing to add land trust, raise your hand. I'm willing to add land trust. Uh, where, where are you adding where it? Where are we adding it and how is it yeah. phrased? At the very, uh, very top. Right, and is it phrased uh, as uh, something to consider? It's under is it a separate community, bullet? Community uh, support, the first at bullet. The very, at the very top, I'll go all the way up, Hannah. No, no. Right? In, no, it's by under, com the it's under community. The community. Oh, there support. you go. Sorry. I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah, there you go. Can we, how's this for a wording? Uh, it goes, uh, park adjacent properties to Sonoma Valley Regional, comma, Jack London State Historic Park, comma, or a future land trust with continued public access, or a land trust. Or potential land trust. Potential, yeah, yeah. Potential. I'm okay with that. Anybody disagree with that wording? No. Okay, good. And can I confirm that was the wording that I just typed out that was correct? Uh, yeah, potential land trust, yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, are people open to adding um, on the second bullet, adding uh, protecting the streams and wildlife corridor? Well, Mark, <laughs> the wildlife corridor is an area of habitat and that habitat includes the streams because it's connecting wildlife populations that are separated by human activities or structures. So anything that runs, walks, swims is part of that wildlife corridor. I'm, I'm not sure you, we, need, we need it in there. I mean, do we actually need to say stream? When most I think we're getting think into the weeds them. again. Yeah, this I mean, we are getting into the weeds, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm also being talked down to, so. Um, uh, no, I don't, <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't mean to talk down to you at all. No, but well, you are. Um, well, so I apologize. Protecting the wildlife corridor, the wildlife corridor is what <clears throat> most people think of is that strip of land along, that goes east-west um, on the north side of the property. Most people do not think of the streams as habitat corridors or riparian corridors. They do not think of it that way. And in fact, according to the planning documents and all of the three alternatives, those uh, stream corridors have been encroached upon and not even taken into consideration appropriate setbacks. So I think that, no, I disagree. I mean, yes, I understand that, that the distinction but I don't think most people do. I think most people think of the streams as not being related to the wildlife corridor. I mean, I don't have a, yeah, Council Member so Earlier in the letter, we corrected the wildlife corridor to wildlife corridors and maybe expanding it to multiple corridors could imply the uh, inclusive of streams. All right, straw vote on that one. I'm, I'm in favor of making it uh, corridors. All in favor? One, two, three, four. Okay, so change that to corridors. Their permeability. Um, yeah, their permeability. Thanks, Kate. 
And then it would have to be in the third bullet point as well. Yeah, thanks. My other suggestion in this section in that same bullet is just to add the word natural to um, related natural resources. Because it's not it's not clear what kind of resources we're referring to. I can agree with that. Raise your hand if you agree with adding natural. Sure. Okay. Hannah, on bullet three, we just have to make the it's to a there just for tense agreement. Thank you. I think that's the right it's. Oh, um, it's. I think it's a there now because we changed oh, it to corridors. Sorry, yeah, I didn't was I clear. I confused myself in my own head. Thank you. <laughs> and then just to make it grammatically correct in the um, the uh, the third bullet um, is just to say are not separate, or maybe you already did that. Um, and then and. And then after boundaries, I would I would just oh you did you change it and their protection. Oh that, that sounds good. That looks good the way you did that. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, uh, almost, Damon? Oh, almost done. We got a comment from Damon, but he's Damon muted right ahead. now. Muted, Damon. Muted. Damon. <laughs> Damon. Everybody go like this. <laughs> Damon, Damon, you're muted. Damon. Unmute. <laughs> probably you know best what, what, I probably what? best that I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we we offered additional changes and it just keeps we're piece by piece going through the whole damn thing. Yeah, I'd like to go to I'd like to go back to what why we're here and our purpose of this letter. It is not to have every possible detail discussed and pinned out. It is to understand the board, understand what the valley wants to see happen. And and we're we're just spending a lot of time on certain things and we're back to where we were 20 30 minutes ago doing line by line of changes that we're not even looking at that he, only he sees sometimes. So I would like for us to move ahead. All right, thank you, Damon. Uh, all in favor of moving ahead and and uh, and not doing more line editing, raise your hand. Okay, so we're just gonna move on. If there's anything major that's left out that we need to add in or that we needs to be taken out, that's, that's a, a, uh, it's a full on element, it's not a line. A uh, line uh, edit, we will consider those. Um, so Hannah, why don't you just, uh, if you don't mind, just slowly scrolling through the document and, um, or does anybody know of anything they want to see changed or that they? Um, uh, can we think for a minute about community comments? We did think about maybe mentioning Opal Trust <laughs> at the end or um, yeah. okay. uh, the, the and federal also, infrastructure um, plan. Or the, Opal um, Trust and Marin Headlands was also mentioned in yeah. that trust, those two. Okay. All in favor of adding those under, um, I guess it's under what governance or wherever that would be. It's at the it's at the last the last category. Yeah. Okay. And what was the what was the what was the proper name for the bill? I don't know the um, the, the government. You the know, infrastructure the, jobs thank bill. Thank you. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know. I always forget. Actually, what I think I've got a um, formally yeah. called there. It was. Uh, I have it. And I'm sorry, Councilmember Eagles, could you clarify which section here at the end I'm adding to? Yeah, so we can put, we can certainly put funding, that in funding sources. Where do we want to put the mention of the OPAL um, as a resource, um, the OPAL Trust? Um, just as something to look at, you know, if you guys agree. It wouldn't go higher, I'm afraid, here, oh. Hannah, probably. Yeah. Because I this think is we, the, well, yeah. Probably when you, where you have the trust, right? Community, community benefits? Yeah, I think that's good. Um, and if you want to mention that the Opal Trust is part of Orcas Island, I don't know if you want to do that, but that's what that was about. It's the section above that. I it, don't it's called the it. Opal Community Land Trust Model, Arthur. <laughs> yeah. We could put that in general information too um, versus benefits. Know, it, um, it is about deed restricted housing, so you could maybe put it in that section, <laughs> housing. 
Let's see, where's, yeah, I mean, it, it, do we have, have that phrase deed restricted housing? Uh, or, yeah. We do not use that phrase yeah. here in the, in the document that as far as I can recall. Um, so what if under general information, we say examples of successful uh, community land trusts include the uh, Opal Community Land Trust model, um, I guess uh, Marin Headland doesn't. Well, Marin Headland was a as a. She said it was a public or nonprofit entity. Like her quote was public or nonprofit entity like Marin Headlands. <laughs> well, Marin Headlands is part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Right. It's so a little it's, different thing. Right. Right. Um, so, well, we could, we could just. Put, I mean, I, it's not that we shouldn't take a look at those things, but um, yeah. But I yeah. think we really want to yeah. look. I mean, I, I, would, I think Opal Trust is good enough, probably, right? Yes. We, can we spell it for Hannah? Is it O P A L? Does anyone know? Yes, O P A L. I believe so, yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see, I've got it written down here somewhere. It is. It's O P A L. Community. O P A L, right? Yeah. Community Land Trust. Uh, and I think Op Opal is all capitalized. Yeah, because it's Orcas. It's about Orcas Island, O P A L. Yeah. Anybody disagree with that addition? Just is, it, is it called the land trust or is it called a housing trust? Do you know? Um, she she quoted Jody Falcon said it was the Opal Community Land Trust. Okay. Yeah. Model. Yeah. <laughs> Model. That's, that's what I've got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just change this to the singular. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the full yeah. sentence. Okay. All right. And then uh, we wanted to add in. Um, um, the other piece of that though the um so it's the federal infrastructure investment and jobs act right the federal infrastructure investment and job jobs act jobs plural jobs act that's what i've got that's what he sent okay. at least if that's correct which i'm assuming it is right that was funding for the microgrid and sewer the sewer um waste waste right water. right right so we want to probably go up on that one then how the uh Sorry, Hannah, I think we want to go up to the infrastructure part of the of the appendix. All right, there I just saw resiliency there's sewage. Okay. So go ahead. You can, you know, I think you can type type this in once and then copy it. So under Potential funding sources for the sewer, put the uh, Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Uh, for us. There you go, you got very, it. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Sorry, Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. And Jobs Act. All right. And then if, if anybody disagrees with me, let me know, but I think you can copy that also under the microgrid piece. Uh, down, go down. It's down, it's the next one down. Uh, there are local there ratepayers. That's it. Yeah. So that's one more funding source. And then um, that could also go under um, whatever the other section about commercial and job creation, or is that? Or I think it's lower down. Housing. And it could go under housing. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this one here, and we actually didn't have a. Uh, Funding source, that's good. We've got a funding source now for commercial space and job creation. Um, in that section, Arthur, our mm -hmm. council members, it, it was brought up several times. I mean, that might be a space uh, to put, to consider trade and technical, the trade and technical center for training disability. Vocational, um, yeah. However you want, but it was brought up at least three times in the comments yeah. uh -huh. um, So that would be a bullet point right above where Hannah is right now. Is that right? Um, or, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Kate, do you yeah. think I could go there? Yeah, innovative yeah. and educational. So I, think, I, I, think I think it could be in that spot. first bullet. Yeah, I think that's the spot probably. Yeah. Um, and my apologies, what am I adding? I'm adding. Uh, a word to this sentence. Yeah, vocational training center. Training, um, yeah. Innovative yeah. at a scale. Vocational training center is one idea or something like that. Or is it a popular idea? I think it, we, we could say that. 
And if you want to put in funding, um, I, mean, I don't know if this would be funding, but so, I think it was Charlie Estudio mentioned training and technical building trades. Um, and it, you can get legislators to sponsor a bill. That's the way he would fund that. <laughs> so state sponsored uh, yeah. funding, uh, trades, uh, yeah. trades training funding. I don't know what we can call it. Mm -hmm. uh, legislative job training bill. That sounds good. <laughs> 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 but that took a bit to get out of my mouth. <laughs> and to, um, to backtrack and, briefly, was there one more spot I needed to add this? I think so. Yeah, it was was it housing? Is that where we were thinking? Thank you. Um, someone also mentioned kind of along those lines. Um, I think it was Patricia Chadwick in the very beginning that um, we don't we have a funding section. Housing. I don't know that we have a funding to, to Mark's point, we don't have a funding section for some of these. So um, we'd have to use it. We'd have to add it. Anybody disagree with adding a, a funding section to the housing piece? Anybody disagree? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and add that. And then there were two more things, Arthur. One was, I don't know if we, maybe Kate, did, did we include anything about disability? In the um, housing section, we did. did job um, creation, integrating people with disabilities. In yeah. the housing section, we, we did. Um, we did, okay. So that, we, that's covered then. Yeah, I, you know, we can, I'll just, I can point it out to you. I just need to find it in my. Oh, no, that's fine. It, okay. it, and then the final thing was Meg Beeler. And I, and, and I think someone else mentioned the 30 by 30 um, goals. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think you could put that in open space, maybe. Yeah, or I think that's climate, open space. Climate, yeah, or climate resiliency, maybe both. Yeah. Maybe both, I think. Yeah. And um, it's in the main letter, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. I don't know if we need to add it, but they, they meant, they, two people let's, mentioned it. Let's go down to climate resiliency and uh, see if we want to add it down there. Um, Maybe down, down just a little bit, Hannah. Is it? It might be in the um, benefits. Is it in there? No, not benefits, but funding. No, there's oh, there's no funding there. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Is uh, can we just add a bullet point that says it is in is aligns with the state's thirty by thirty? Yeah. I think that's what um, I would do. Yeah. Yeah. Right there at the at the end. <laughs> and what what is uh, um, thirty by thirty? Is that a what do we call that a 30, uh, focus? 30, or? Yeah, thirty by thirty goals. Goals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's actually well, it's the states, but it's also the um, it's also you know the nation. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Let me just leave it there. Um, so I, I see two things. Are are you are you did you go through your list, Angela? I did. I I did. I can't think. Can't okay. do anything else. The museum. Um, I, I, the museum I see two is things there. that we might add. One would be um, uh, Norman Gilroy mentioned the village concept. I'm not oh, right. familiar yeah. with that, but maybe we could just put it in there and yeah. just as a placeholder. Um, so oh, that would be yeah. under probably under housing, I guess. Or the community concept or, where you live live work a live workspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do have that. I thought that I thought we can we may have covered that, but I guess we didn't. Maybe yeah. If it's I mean, there's so much in here already. I it's, <laughs> I just want to make sure he doesn't feel left out if he looks at this again. Right. Um, well, he, he was the one who talked about the sewage, the plant. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. And then um, Greg Montgomery from the Historical Society mentioned um, the museum. The museum. So I mean, we have the museum. Certainly, I don't know if we just want to add like a half a sentence about. A museum to tell the story of the context of the place. Yeah, I mean Something that's like that. perfectly yeah. fine. So community supports a museum. Museums maybe to maintain the legacy and story. Well, it's, it's, it's already there, actually. I know yeah, it is not, there. I'm not sure what he <laughs> why he put and that. Yeah. Perhaps the recording of this meeting as well. What's that, Matt? And perhaps <laughs> a, a, a place. <laughs> Well, I think his point was not just a museum. 
he wanted to make sure that the story, the legacy of SDC is remembered, the people, the people who lived and worked there both. So I, I think that's yeah. inherent in in the museum, but yeah. Yeah. yeah I think Every one of these things is like a, a door you could open and you have an entire landscape um, open up. And, you know, and so. if we can, while we're on that section, Hannah, can you just change contiguous to linked so it matches the other? Oh yeah. That's how we said linked. Yeah. We did yeah. Say linked. Okay. linked with a uh, link with and complementary too. Does that still work? All right, we can change we can take it out if you like. I don't know what yeah, it says. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All good. <laughs> it's okay. All right. All right. All right. Anything else? My notes really quick. All right. Well, um, do I have a, a motion to uh, approve the letter? I have a request. Mm -hmm. Under that um, the water treatment section. There's a reference to a specific development as having underperforming um, waste treatment. I like that that specific reference removed. If I can um, find it. Is it under general information? Is it under? <clears throat> uh, let's see. The the one the pay, about the paying the fine. Trying to find it. Hannah, can you just do a search for? Under oh, here it is. It's oh, under oh. potential funding sources. Uh, it says lower sewer district fees, bullet number three. And I would change that language to um, after underperforming septic systems, just put in the area. Okay. And Hannah, remove. you were there. Go back to where yeah. you were. Okay. Um, look at the fourth bullet here. Sorry, Mark. Oh, thank oh, you. Sorry. Fourth. Yeah. Um, I would just put in the area and just remove the specific, um, the specific yeah, I, reference. I I agree with that. Anybody, anybody not agree with that change? Okay. And I, I'm changing the highlighted area to the area. Sorry. The area. Yeah, okay. I think that thank that's you. probably fine. And do you want to take out underperforming or was that okay, Mark? No, I, I think it's a relevant issue. I just okay. don't think that yeah, we can good. specify right. a specific That's my areas. understanding, but I'm not a sewage guy. Yeah. So. May, I, may I make a suggestion? Just put the period at the end of, of systems and that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's actually even better. <laughs> yeah. Currently served by, currently served by underperforming. Oh, that's a little awkward, but it's okay. It'll never be a hit song, but you know. So um, I, um, even though I know you don't wanna spend any more time going through anything that I put together, um, I do wanna offer what I've written as um, a record of this work and, uh, it, and in case you wanna use any of the other sections that I developed for potential funding sources and benefits. Um, I'm not attached to you using any of it, but if you like any of the language, feel free to use it. If you wanna fill out those sections. Um, Mark, I, um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I think let's save that stuff for down the road. Uh, you know, we wanna, we wanna approve this letter tonight. And so we, we can't make, changes after we vote really so um you know i think we're i'm feeling like we're at the point where it's it's time to vote mark but i would really value having that all that work that you did and i thank you for that because i think like we've identified tonight this this is a process right and it's going to be you know we're going to have much more time here i think so and and more chances i hope to weigh in with specifics so anyway yeah. just might want to have that out there. And yeah, David. Mr. Chairman, you asked for a motion. I move that we approve the letter and the appendix. All right, do I have a second on that motion? Seconded. All right, all in favor of approving the letter to send to the supervisors and other folks? 
Raise your hand. All right, unanimously passed. We did it. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you all. Woo. Thank, Thank you, you all and for community for hanging in there and commenting. Yeah. Yeah, that feels like a big, that feels like a milestone. I mean, it's only one of many probably, but, and thanks for hanging in there, folks. You know, what's amazing is that a year and a half ago when we started, I could have never imagined <laughs> that we would have put together, that you would have put together the committee, the ad hoc committee, such a document uh, in such detail and be so important to the valleys. Uh, it's just amazing the work and the maturity of this organization in just a year and a half. And the number of people who come to our meetings now, 60, 70, 55, it's amazing <laughs> to me, the number of people who come to our meetings. We started out and nobody came to our meetings. <laughs> and so it's very impressive. And, and clearly the SDC and the future of the SDC means so much to all the Valley, including Kenwood, so thank you, know, you for your work. Just an observation as well that this, this group, this committee is now the, the leadership committee for, for a vision for the Sonoma Valley community for SDC. I mean, there is not a public, there is not another public presentation or public entity that offered this, um, this vision. Um, and I don't know what that means going forward, that maybe by virtue of having participated this way, we now are in land use, <laughs> <laughs> land use realm, you know? <laughs> it's kind of hard to get that camel outside when it's inside the tent. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks everybody. This is I, I share all those comments by Damon and, and Matt. The, uh, it's impressive what how far we've come, and I just appreciate all the engagement of everybody and the good thinking and the um, yeah, it's it's really important and um, and people recognize it. You know, people people value what we're doing. So thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see each other on this nineteenth, and then I encourage you, like I said, to the, the public to, if you can come to the supervisors meeting on the 25th and just, um, you know, I'll probably just go and just say, I'm, you know, I'm the head of the Mac and I, you know, I hope you've read it. Hopefully I've, I've already talked to the supervisors, but um, yeah, just let them know I'm, I'm there watching what's going on. Is that a virtual meeting? I, I trust it is. it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, quick question, Chair Dawson and, and Hannah. Um, uh, are you guys we're good with procedure everything is dated the sixth which is tomorrow i guess that was optimistic thinking but i will leave it with you unless there's anything else we have to discuss now yeah i think we could even date it the fifth if we wanted to but it doesn't really matter we have okay. somebody in the audience that has their um an attendee who has their hand up are we um able to have mm -hmm. public comment we have um, no further opportunity for public comment on tonight's okay. agenda, but there is the meeting on the 19th. Yeah, I tell, let that person, I, don't, I can't see the hand, but let them know, uh, you know, I apologize that we can't take your comment right now, but please uh, send it in by email to, um, to Hannah at the county and she'll pass it along to the rest of us. Yes, thank you for that option that I forgot. Well, I'm fine here. Um, so, you need a motion to not yeah. to push you. We in have a motion to budget. adjourn okay. the meeting. <laughs> I, I move second. to adjourn the meeting. I have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of adjourning the meeting, raise your hand. All right. Yay. Go ahead home and have some dinner. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night.